Good morning and welcome to the June 28, 2019 Special School Committee meeting. We are at the Hockenden Public Library and we have a quorum. Uh, Mina brought is participating remotely. And at this time, I would like to invite uh, everyone who is able and interested to stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. My apologies that we're starting just a few minutes late. We had some technical difficulties, but um, at this point, we will move into our agenda today. We have some, uh, a small amount of normal business. Sorry, the camera's this way, and you guys are this way. We have a small amount of normal business up front, and then the bulk of our meeting is focused on um, taking a checkpoint with the school committee itself and looking at the year ahead together. So, um, the first one of business, Dr. Cavanaugh, if you could advance the slides. Um, we have the website subcommittee membership reduction request. Um, this is uh, coming from me. Uh, as most of you know, there is a website a subcommittee that has been working along with the technology department this year to um, design and develop and launch our new website. Uh, we have a large roster of membership and there are three positions that um, have remained less active for a number of reasons. Um, there are two high school students who have just graduated and one CPAC representative um, that we had on our committee who, um, because of scheduling conflicts and whatnot, has had some difficulty uh, making the meetings at times. So uh, given that we have just a, probably a few key meetings left and we do need a quorum to vote to uh, approve the launch of the subcommittee of uh, the uh, website, I am requesting that we reduce our roster by these three positions. Um, just a, a note, when we originally crafted the roster for the subcommittee, we wanted to make a, a broad list of, of all represented interests. What we found through our analysis is that most families have the same kind of experiences and the same kind of needs on the website, um, and students as well. Uh, there are a few exceptions. English language learners and those with accessibility concerns have very unique needs, and we have Jill Kimball, who has been on the committee and active in advocating for those needs uh, throughout the whole process. Um, I have reached out to all three members, the high school students, as well as our CPAC representative, and they're fine with this reduction. Um, so I don't know what questions you may have, but... Well, we discussed this last week, and I think we're all set. Yep. So I move to reduce the roster by three. I'll second. Okay, motion by uh, Meg, second by Jen. Uh, do we have to take a roll count vote, Mina? Yes. Okay, Chair. So let's take a roll count vote. Mina? Yes. Jen? Yes. May? Aye. And yes from me. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's, um, it's exciting that the website will be launching on um, soft launch with the district page on July 8th. And then the school pages and the detail pages will be coming up mid-August. Um, I will say that um, it's a soft launch. We're going to be filling out content as we go, but it is exciting, and I think um, this will help us be able to take our votes and move forward. It looks great. Thanks for all your work. Thank you very much. Really pretty. Yes, Amanda. Last uh, last week when we saw the initial um, look of the website, it was beyond uh, impressive. Excellent, excellent work. Thank you for what you have done uh, and the entire uh, team. I thank uh, you know, Mr. Ghosh and his team and all the work that they've done and the administrative team to work on the content. There's some great content from Mrs. Parsons and Dr. Kavanaugh and the department heads and so forth. So group effort and a lot of work is going in. Okay, so our next item, if you please. Yeah. We have three items. I just put them together on the slide because they're all um, items that are, Mina is going to run. So I'll turn it over to Mina for the review of open meeting guidelines, which we do annually. Um, I guess uh, the intent behind this was to, as a team, look at all the items that uh, we want to just have a refresher around. Um, and open meeting law was something that came up um, as one of the first things, especially um, in the next couple of meetings with me participating remotely. I had um, reviewed what the procedures are, but I also thought it's a great opportunity to just look at um, uh, you know OML in general and do a refresher and perhaps uh, 
look to do this in a yearly basis on a yearly basis so what you see here are some links that are available to you um, to look at um, the first one is the OML guide itself um, there are some presentations um, uh, presentation handouts from MASC. Um, I found those uh, useful as well, so I thought I'd share those. And then there are some training videos that the AG's office has posted on the website. So this is for everyone's consumption to take a look and just refresh. The other thing I was uh, wondering is if there are any other items that the school committee thinks uh, we should be looking to do a refresher on every year. To kind of say okay uh, worth going through just once just to refresh um, can I think jump out can I think yes. about that and get back to you okay that sounds great um, Jen or Amanda if you have anything see nothing comes to mind but I'll think about it if anything pops into my head I'll let you know that would be good okay to yeah, that's great. Thank you. Moving on to the next item that we have. Um, may I? Yes. Amanda? Sorry, we're just having a little projection issue at the moment. Okay. Sorry. But you may, please, go ahead. We'll, we'll work on the projection as you go. Go ahead, Nina. Okay, so the next item um, is the school committee calendar. And this is coming from a place where um, we are trying to look to the year ahead, and I think we had expressed in the past uh, in the past year that it'd really be nice to take a look at all the things that are going on. Um, you know, this is the first attempt primarily around our meetings, training, community events, so we can look at the year ahead. Uh, I do hope that we will be able to get to that place where we are able to look at the agenda um, items as well and kind of have an agenda planner. Uh, but that's that's the next step. But this is primarily around training and community events. So um, I gave a first shot at what could possibly be the guidelines. Uh, if you go to line item number 48, 49, 50, and 51, um, these were some thoughts that when we engage in community events, uh, let's look to make sure that the engagement is reflective of all schools, programs, and student interests. So uh, we receive typically, uh, you know, for instance, if you look at the calendar, are you all able to see the calendar? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So if you um, if you look at the calendar, say uh, for January, um, there there is typically a tech legislative breakfast and the Elmwood Community Reading Day mm -hmm. um, between January and February timeframe. In April, we have the Elmwood Kenya Day. So these are some standard events that happen. Now all of these dates have to be confirmed. These are just you know. Uh, placeholders knowing some of the things that go on um, and that was the thought process behind it to put that out on the calendar um, so are there other aspect which I thought we did very well this past year was office hours so if you look at September when you have the family day perhaps we could look at the office hours at that time um, we could also look at um, office hours that we had done, let's say, uh, for the, with the Hopkinton 101. I thought that was uh, extremely successful. Mm -hmm. um, and we had done office hours just before the annual town meeting at the senior center. Um, I think giving that opportunity is uh, helpful as well. I can move on to the next one, which is the training. Oh, um, wait, are we going to have a conversation on this first? Oh, you mean this, the training is part of the calendar? I beg your pardon? So do you want to talk about the each uh, category as you bring it That's up? That's right. That's right. So did you want to entertain a conversation on the, uh, the blue items at all? Yes. 
so the training, uh, the, now the, the blue items are typically the uh, SC meetings, right? The school committee meetings. So I'm just quickly going over the school committee training. Yeah. I think one of the things um, that we possibly want to look at is look at some training for the year ahead. We know that the MSC conference happens in November. Um, we know that this year we have signed up to do training with visions so some of the things that you see here for instance november 6th through 9th is the msc fall conference um, just tentatively thrown the dates in september for the visions uh, diversity training uh, we could also look at other opportunities um, to do some self-paced training where we don't necessarily all have to be there but look to see how are we to do for instance uh, school committee goal setting what uh, how do we understand the funding terminology what does foundation budget mean how are these formulas come up so these could be things that we're able to do in a self-paced manner uh, but i think what's important is to identify uh, ourselves what are some of the training needs we see in the upcoming year that will help us um, perform our role better and it's also aligned overall with uh, the strategic plan and the district goals. So for instance, the diversity training is clearly aligned with um, our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to identify as a team what are our training needs, I, I think it's important to lay this out. Um, the other thing that I want to draw your attention to is um, I, you know, it's colored in a training kind of a color, perhaps it needs to be different, is December 9th. Um, it's a um, suggested op opportunity for us to do a mid-year self-assessment as a school committee. This year we've been talking about doing some goal setting as a school committee um, so that we set some smart goals as we have called out um, and we'll review that soon enough. So just an opportunity to do a mid-year self-assessment and do some form of course correction there. And the last one is the school committee meetings. Um, so those are all jotted down. Um, I think some of the things that tend to happen around the budget season are some joint meetings with the Board of Selectmen and Appropriations Committee. Uh, we tend to have some executive sessions. They typically happen on the day of our school committee meetings, but starting at six. Uh, we do have to anticipate some emergency meetings, but the goal um, that I would like us to work towards is to have a planned year ahead. Um, so open to hearing some thoughts on each of those items. May I ask if we're looking at the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month? And I'm only asking because Mrs. Carson, this year we did first and third, which, you know, either way is fine. So Mrs. Days. Carson, Thursdays, yes. Mrs. Carson is on the school committee in her hometown of Milford. And she, I think, is just trying to schedule her opposite hours. So the sooner okay. we know, the sooner she'll know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, Dr. Kemp, now, um, this was just, you know, placeholders. These were based on what I found on the shared drive. Um, perhaps I have them differently. Um, so these are all dates to be confirmed. So uh, I have uh, personally no preference on one or the other. We can absolutely continue to do what we have been doing. If these are off, we will correct it. Does Mrs. Parsons have a preference? Well, I think she had been planning on first and third, so it might be easier if we move them to first and third oh, for her. That's fine with me. Oh, okay. for us okay. to be first and third. Yes, okay. it would be first and third. Her school committee would be second okay. and fourth. And it seems that's to be right. that's fine. various depending on the month on here, too. So, I mean, yeah, we can just try to do them all. Sure. And there are some that have overlapped. And when, sure. when that happens, she just doesn't attend this one, which is fine. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Anything else from anyone with regard to um, the events um, or the training? I, I really like having this broader overview of what's required of us time-wise and to have a sense when 
these more social community events are occurring when we might be needed. Um, the self-paced training sessions, I'm all for it, and I hope that we're able to allow some online participation options for those. Um, just in case we cannot do a 20 hour a week commitment with full time jobs, if you know what I mean. Sure. Right. Sure. Um, I've been in touch with MASE and they have actually been fabulous in sharing a bunch of resources. So I think we can continue to look at some of those documents and perhaps uh, continue to ask for more online training. That would be great. It'd be really helpful if we could do it at our own pace, but have the public have access to these links too, so they know what we're looking at. Um, sure. Because it's kind of hard to commit more time than is already required. Sure. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Um, I, I just had a thought on the office hours. Um, sure. We introduced those this year, which I thought was great. I like that Nancy idea. brought that forward. Um, I feel like, although attendance was often low, I feel like I'd like to keep the rhythm of it for another year, um, just so that the community can start to anticipate. I mean, I think we did them, we tried to do them monthly, I'm not sure if we did. So I, I guess I'd like to see them as forge ahead with that same schedule for a second year before we um, dial it back. Just to see if, as it catches on, if there's more um, attendance. So I guess I would throw out a request that we do. We try to schedule a few more of those, especially in the beginning of the year when families are, um, like in August, September, October, when families are moving in and they have more questions. Um, yes. I don't know. I, I, I'm just not sure. I think some people are just kind of catching on to the fact that we did that. So. Right, right. No, that's absolutely uh, makes sense. I do think that um, this uh, idea that uh, Nancy brought forth was uh, extremely successful and I think very well received. Uh, and I think we can be thoughtful uh, and plan, you know, that was the whole idea to bring this forth, is to think where all do we want to be, what all are those events. So at times we were trying to figure those out for the month, so the idea was what we already know works where there are going to be gatherings like family day or Hopkinton 101, we have a ready base of people who are going to show up. Uh, but I also think um, the idea to go to legacy farms um, for an office hours, that was great, although it happened last minute and not everyone was able to participate. Um, are there other places and events that we think um, where we could have that kind of an audience? We could just add them on. Good. I also think that there are other aspects, for instance, the popsicles event that will happen in the summer. Uh, I think that is something we need to add. Um, so there are a bunch of things. Um, so what we can do, hopefully, um, is make this available to everyone to edit and add for consideration. And you know, we might be able to piggyback on, say, a hot bombs group event that is already happening. Um, I, I know that has worked well with some other organizations that have tried to get into different neighborhoods and communities. There are other events, so maybe we can expand our reach by piggybacking on some existing functions. Right. That's right. a good idea. That's great. I love this calendar, Nina. I, I, I would love to see us, I know you mentioned this um, in your comments, but I would love to see us for each of the blue meetings be able to just tag the one or two main agenda items, you know, when we do capital budget review, when we do um, you know, start a budget process or hear the budget presentations from a, a school or a department. I think there's a pretty standard set of things that happen in conjunction with the new stuff and I, if we could somehow lay that on top, it would really help us anticipate what's coming. Yes. I Absolutely. Who said I agree that I missed? Nate. Nate. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's great. Thank you. All right.
Um, if there are no further um, suggestions at this point, I can move on. Okay. Yeah. Should I? Yes, please. Okay. So, so the next one um, is related to the school committee goal setting, and if we open the smart goals development um, worksheet, this is this is something again coming from MASE to us. Um, the reason why we are looking at this is primarily because um, there are members, uh, Amanda is certainly one of them, but others as well who have expressed the need to set goals for the school committee. And um, this is one approach to set goals uh, for any anybody really. Um, and most of you may be familiar with the concept of SMART to have specific and strategic um, goals, make sure that they're measurable, they're action oriented, they're rigorous, realistic, and results focused, and be timed and tracked. Um, so that is what is the definition of SMART and what this cheat is doing here is if we started with a proposed grab goal, we could look to answer some of these questions uh, for instance, what would be the use of data? Um, how do we make sure that it is specific and strategic? So there are some cues that the sheet is providing for us to review as a team and get to uh, a goal which is a smart goal. So at the top, my, my hope is that uh, with the second half of the session, when we will do some reflection um, on where we are, uh, how we can improve our processes, some of the um, broad goals that we want to explore will emerge, and we can use this sheet together to draft a SMART goal. Great. Great. Okay. Um, so the next thing that I want to go over is the school committee goals examples. What you see here is again using the SMART approach, some goals that districts have provided, uh, um, have come up with. So the first one is, um, I'm not quite sure which district it's coming from. Again, the source of this information, as I've noted, there is MASC. And the second one is coming from Melrose School Committee. That again was shared by MASC. So if you look at the first model that you see here for setting up the goals, um, so there is a district strategy around student achievement. And what I can read this out uh, for everyone that the school committee, uh, so the student achievement goal is that the public schools will ensure that all students are prepared for their choice of post secondary pursuits by providing rigorous, innovative, and supporting learning environment that meets Massachusetts and community standards. Uh, what the school committee has done has given a very measured, time tracked, uh, description of how their goal will support the student achievement goal. So they have given, for instance, in this case, that by June of that year, the school committee would have reviewed and approved district policies in order to articulate and support the kind of learning environment that the community is looking for. And they have identified the benchmarks that they would have identified policies related to teaching and learning that uh, are important and set out a plan for their review. And to review and revise teaching and learning policies by June 2015. So these are around the policies that would support that kind of an environment. So this is an example of a school committee that has worked towards that. And what you see further down are goals similar in nature set by this particular school committee. Um, so if you scroll down to number three on for that same school committee, they have talked about community engagement. And there is the 
goal around engaging the community in a vision for our students' achievements that's grounded in the belief that first-rate public education is our community's most valuable asset. And again, the school committee has tried to bring it in a smart way by defining the, the time frame. They've talked about June of that year to develop and implement a proactive communication plan that celebrates the successes of the districts and engages the public in open conversations um, related to the district's challenges. And they want to measure them by agenda items um, that are set forth, the meeting minutes, and increased attendance of liaisons at district and city events. Um, and again, they have their benchmarks set up. They're talking about establishing a community subcommittee by a certain time frame. They're talking about a time frame by when the subcommittee will report back. Um, they're also talking about completing a review of the roles um, in terms of communication by a certain time frame. So again, very measured, timed approaches that should drive accountability and a common goal towards which the school committee is marching. Um, so the second model is related to, um, is specific to Melrose. And Melrose School Committee seems to have some overarching goals that they have called out here for that particular year. They have talked about student engagement, educator support, community collaboration, and strategic leadership. So they first call those um, specific overarching goals and then gone ahead and listed out SMART goals for the year. Um, for instance, one of their goals um, in the past year was the first one that you see is in collaboration, the Melrose School Committee in collaboration with Melrose Public Schools Administration will pilot a series of podcasts and video casts designed to increase community awareness around the state of pre-K through postgraduate education in general as well as in public schools. Um, and so you can see um, the third one, if you look at it, the third bulleted item that talks about by a certain date, reach consensus on measures that define student success in the matter of public schools in an articulate and understandable manner. Answering the question, how do we know our schools are serving our students effectively? Um, we don't see benchmarks um, here in this particular case, but it looks like they're actually looking to define benchmarks in this particular instance. So the idea um, to share these two models was to look at what other districts are doing and learn from that and create our own goals which have to be smart and they have to, when, when we say smart, a big part of it, the R, is realistic. Um, and of course rigorous and results focused, but we need to be very mindful of what is it that we may be able to achieve and set ourselves, um, you know, have that stretch, but be realistic in our goal setting. So um, any questions, thoughts around this? So is the plan today to try to come up with a draft of goals or are we going to reserve that for another occasion? My hope is to uh, do the goal setting as a separate exercise. Okay. Uh, but today as we look at debriefing um, how the year uh, passed went and how where we are today in terms of processes and gaps that we have, uh, I think some broad draft goals will emerge. That that's the hope, and then we can look to define it further. Does does that make sense? Yes. Is that today? Is that what you just said? So okay. we are doing okay. that exercise, right, Dr. Kavanaugh? Where we are looking to see how the year uh, went by and what are some of the processes that we need to look to improve. So hopefully some things will emerge that could go into goal setting. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I guess I just thought that the, the district goals and the school improvement plans would 
so come before school committee goals. Do you know what I'm saying? But if sure. If, Oh, okay. to discuss those. So that all of yes. the goals are Online. in sync with each other? Yes. yes. That's, you know. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I think absolutely. Yeah. We, have to, we have to line up. I mean, and some of our goals, I, I mean, I have no idea we haven't done this work before, and I think this is important work to focus our efforts. Um, but some of our goals, goals, maybe like this year, this past year, we didn't state it, but we had a transparency goal and a, you know, community com outreach goal, which led to um, some different approaches to our budgeting, which were very appreciated, and led to Nancy setting up the um, office hours. I mean, I think we didn't actually articulate that as a goal, but we were focused on that um, as individuals. It seemed to surface as a focal point of some of our work. So some of it is, I think our goals might be in how we do our work, right. and some of them are directly in what the district is doing. How do we support what the district is doing and then how do we do a better job relating to the community and so forth. So I think it's, my understanding is it could be a mix. Right, no, you, you're absolutely right, Amanda. And, and Dr. Kavanaugh, um, I think to your point, this is uh, the initial cut on the processes that will emerge from this, but that may not be it. Right. So, for instance, uh, I can see possibly a goal emerging that we need to define some of the processes and procedures, which we have again attempted this past year for school committee work, right, emerging out of uh, our dialogue today. Uh, that may not seem directly tied to the school improvement plans, if you will, but it will impact the work. So I'm hopeful that we will continue that and before we schedule the school committee goal setting, uh, I think we want to see work with your goals, the strategic plan, the school improvement plans, they should all line up absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. So possibly an August time frame um, for the goal setting for the school committee, late August. We can we can we can look at that together. When, when do the sorry go ahead. When do the principals present their um, so sorry the title is totally school approval plan. Thank you. <laughs> they yeah. are on the August fifteenth agenda. Right. Okay. So I feel like we might need to push back our goals at least another meeting if they're going to listen to their school improvement plans because that needs to be factored into our yeah. plan as well. Yeah. Sure. sure. Um. I think, sorry, just one more. I know when this topic came up at the beginning of last year about the idea of doing goals, um, I think we, we talked about the fact that we have a specific charter that is mandated, that is policy. Um, we do policy, we do bud oversee budget, we oversee the superintendent. And we felt that the charter was enough to define our work. And I think what we found in the course of the year is that we could actually further focus, you know, our extra efforts. I mean, as we talk even about evaluating which policies come to the surface first, or which um, subcommittees we need to form, or like just giving us a, our goals can give us a framework for prioritizing those kinds of decisions. We still do the same sort of work, but which thing do we do first? It's a big complex district, <laughs> so which things do we do first? And I think absolutely we have to be in alignment with it. <coughs> you know, where the district is going, that we've all, you know, worked on the district strategic plan, which is great. So I think, I think this will be a nice um, level of focus for what we already do. Thank you right. for bringing it right. forward. Yes, I think so too. You are welcome. Uh, I'm actually quite excited about this and what I'm um, hoping is in the upcoming month we can actually learn from MASC and other school districts how do they go about creating their goals um, and how do they align with their district strategic plan. So we can always learn from other districts who, are, uh, who have done this before us and hopefully be better, have the advantage of uh, of their knowledge and experience. This is also, sorry, at the um, MASC conference last fall, this was something that was mentioned, that school committees do goals, um, and they do articulate smart goals. We have been in the habit of doing it specifically, so it is definitely done. Right. Yeah, I would be interested in knowing what district had the first sample. 
If sure, you can find I, can, out, I can find out and let you know. Okay. Did you like it or did you not like it? Which is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's a, a district that struggles. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. Yes. I think both examples are districts that are struggling a bit. And so I think that's important too to keep that in mind. If we could find examples of districts that are sort of comparably aligned to the success of Hopkinton's district, that would be helpful. Because I think that there's some things on there that maybe aren't unimportant but aren't necessarily, don't need to be a focal point. Right. And I guess, Jen, um, the idea behind this is simply to look at the model. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have the same goals. It's just the framework that there are benchmarks in certain cases that they have used. And in our case, those benchmarks would be different. Our goals will be absolutely aligned to where we are as a district and where we want to be as a district and a school committee. Good. Yeah, I know, I know we're not discussing details, but I, in the Melrose um, example, I think, I think that's where they had a mention of connecting more to municipal um, partners and I with our town in such a dramatic state of growth I do like the idea of us getting um, even more closely connected to as you were doing the planning board this year and the board of selectmen and the, and um, uh, the zoning advisory board and I think there is a lot that we can learn from each other and especially as we're, we're just all sort of struggling with this growth at the same time that kind of that topic sort of excites me a little bit as we look mm -hmm. forward. So. Great. Among other things. Um, we are a little bit ahead of time I guess if there are no other questions comments on this particular section. Are there? No, no. I, I think I want to say something and I hope it's related. I was thinking about Melrose and Melrose is a very different district from ours. It doesn't have the kind of success level that we have had, especially in recent years. But it is of a comparable size and they do have seven school committee members. And as our town continues to grow and we're growing exponentially, I think it's something for us to consider inviting more people to be on the school committee because the demands on our time seem to increase and I'm not speaking personally I'm thinking broadly that those who can serve on the school committee tend to be people who have certain privileges of time and leisure that is not dissing anybody right but we need to make sure we can accommodate those people who are working full time and whose spouses are working full time. So if they want to participate on school committee and run for it, they can do that and not feel as if they have to give 20 hours a week. I think this is very important to acknowledge and I might be wrong and I'm, I'm ready to hear criticism of it, but I feel we need to be sensitive to all the members of the community who are working full time and want to have some input into their children's lives. No, that's a good point. Um, As it gets bigger, we need to think about if we need to add. Um, yes. And, and even just to be more representative of the community as a whole. Yes. Just in general on the, on the committee, if we yes. have two more people. Yeah. But because I, I met someone at the Hopkinton 101 day who expressed an interest in running for school committee, and I thought, wouldn't this person be a wonderful addition? And we have so few slots that open up with these three-year staggered terms that I think it's just something for us to consider going forward as we grow. Does that go through the town charter? Are we defined no. in the town charter, or are we, do we self-define our membership? I don't know, that's a good question. I'm pretty so sure it's in the, the, um, the bylaws. Let, let's find out mm -hmm. about it, Amanda. I think as our numbers are growing, you know, I mentioned this at some point that as we are reaching the 4,000 mark, there may, there may be other impacts, um, you know, where we are reaching that threshold with regard to what needs to be done uh, in our district itself. So the points that both Meg and Jen have brought forth about being more representative is very valid. So we should look to see what's the process behind it. Thank you. I, I can take that on and um, see if I can bring some updates back. Thank you. Not that we're making a decision here, but just the progress. Yeah. Okay. We are still 
about 15 minutes ahead of schedule and we're really hoping to have Nancy join us for the next part of the agenda. Correct. Right. Um, so while, we, while we, we wait, I will, I brought along, sorry to reach in front of you, <laughs> Mina. I brought along as a food for thought for our next part of the agenda, our little brochure that we created. With your name spelled wrong? No, no, my name's Renan. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I brought it along because we're going to, you know, I don't want to start the next topic, but we are going to move into um, a conversation about how our year went and whatnot. And I, at the brochure, you know, I'm showing you, I, don't, I think you probably have a link somewhere, but it was just that little brochure that we had for Hawkington 101, which just has our names and our happy picture at Marathon. But the um, inside flap in blue, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Um, it just captured, you know, some of the efforts that we had underway uh, this past year, and since since we have a few minutes, we could just read it because I think it um, it speaks to some of what we've done, which I think um, is pretty exciting. So our official responsibilities again were to hire and evaluate the superintendent of schools, and we had a great inaugural year for Dr. Cavanaugh. Review and improve our annual school budget, and establish educational policies and broad educational goals. That's our charter. Mm -hmm. Um, and then some other things that we did this year under the transparency bucket, um, we introduced the office hours, we launched um, a subcommittee to oversee the development of the district website, we collaborated with HCAM on the community calendar, and um, we uh, did some work, Meg and Mina, on improving the school committee website information, some of which uh, is on hold and will hopefully go live with the new site. Um, in the area of managing growth, we approved over nine additional new teachers to serve our students this year. We participated in diversity forums and we participated in strategic planning workshops. And under our own effectiveness, we connected with colleagues from other towns through the MASC conference, which we hadn't really been attending as much in the past. And we streamlined our policy review and dissemination process. And other fun stuff we did was recognize students and staff um, for some of their great work and we received reports from the students and student council, which is always fun. Um, and we attended a number of community events, only a few of which are on here. So um, we maybe just keep that in mind as we think about um, transitioning when Nancy gets here to our team building. Because it was a, a busy year, a fun year. Yes, absolutely, Amanda. Um, you know, when, um, when Meg and I were also working on the subcommittee work and drafting all of that, and even um, as I was looking to provide descriptions of each of the subcommittee that we've been on, it's so much work. It, it's a lot of effort and time into so many things. And I would, you know, once we have the first cut of the calendar set up, we should look to even post where we are with all of our meetings and engagements, um, you know, with all the subcommittees, with the liaisons that we have. Um, I, I think it's it's been a fabulous year in terms of the effort that we've been able to put in. Hello, Nancy. Hello. Good morning. Who's interesting? So, so that's fabulous, and I think uh, that's a good discussion closure for the SMART goals, and hopefully some of those will come out of here, and uh, to Dr. Kavanaugh's point, we want to make sure that all of this is aligned um, with the district leadership goals as well, the school improvement plans. Okay, so just so you know, if you, would you mind just going back to the agenda? The first. Um, so we just got to the point where we um, talked about the school committee goal setting. Great. Um, and now that our vice chair is here, I am going to pass the baton for presiding officer. Although I have the next, I think I have the next agenda item, but I will pass the presiding officer role over to our vice chair happily. Um, but we are right at the point where we were going to. I don't know. Did anyone order lunch? Me no. no. I don't think so. Did no. No one got back to me. Okay. I will have my dinner at some point. <laughs> All right, so, we so we're on item seven now. Oh, I clearly mm -hmm. sat on the wrong side of the room here. Sorry. As did here, I. do you want to sit over here? Right. 
Um, so we are moving into the team building exercises. That yes, we are. Okay. Excellent. And just, just so you know, just for fun, while we were stalling a little bit, we had a little gap. I passed out a little brochure that we had had at Hopkins Hill 101. Yeah. We looks like we need to update that. I drew our attention to the blue page because I think it highlighted, you know, oh, some right. of the fun stuff we did this year, and it kind of sets a um, mindset for going into the team building. So great, you missed that. Okay, Dr. Kevin, I'm sorry if you would mind advancing the slide. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sitting here as the agenda item um, overseer for this team building. Um, I guess I, I have been one of the people, but I think several of us had thought about maybe taking a, a moment and kind of reflecting on how things went this past year and how to get ready for next year. I think a number of us kind of were talking about that, I, I've heard. So um, I'm excited to do this. For anyone at home who's not aware, um, the school committee obviously is bound by open meeting law and we only meet mostly when people see us. And so we're elected to these roles or we continue, we start a year, we jump into agenda items and then, you know, the ball just keeps rolling and we really never get together as a, five, a group of five to reflect on how things are working. And um, this year, this past year, I give a lot of credit to Nancy who recognized this and brought in at one meeting um, Dorothy Presser from the MASC to start a conversation with us about what we do and how we do it and how we can do it more effectively. Everybody seemed to enjoy that process of sort of self-reflection and I think um, Nina seems to be carrying that um, philosophy forward. So this is not um, a moderated session with, Ms. with Dorothy Presser. I think it would be nice to do, but we wanted to get this in quickly between the end of last year while we're shifting gears to the next year. And this is this finds us here in, in the end of June, um, taking this time together. So the objective here is to strengthen our team spirit. Again, all this great blue stuff that we did. Uh, to critically review our work, um, figure out smart ways that we can build on what we've done well and maybe um, improve how effectively we've worked as either individuals or team members or as a collective body so that we can just be better next year. And um, I have personally done the Kool-Aid on the growth mindset. So I think we ask um, our students and our educators and our administrators to have annual reviews and to think about what went well and what didn't. And it's only sort of fitting that we ask the similar, a similar set of questions of ourselves. So that's kind of, that's the spirit. Hopefully without a moderator, we all go into this with the same um, positive intent and hopefully it goes well, but patience will be appreciated because <laughs> we don't really, haven't done this before. There are some specific ground rules just to make sure that we're all on the same page. These are obvious, but I'll state them anyway. Um, we don't want to refer to any specific issues that would fall under confidentiality or executive session guidelines. I don't think that would happen, but just to be safe, we'll say it. We don't want to criticize each other directly. It's not an individual thing. It's more how we work as a team. Um, we want to approach this exercise with a growth mindset. If we can, listen with an open mind and share honestly and respectfully. Kind of motherhood and apple pie, but anything else for that, Nina? No, I think this sounds great. Um, we want to focus on the processes uh, is what we had started off by saying uh, and I think that's crucial. So Mina and I talked about um, how to structure this conversation. I mean we could just sit around and say how to go, how, what worked and what didn't work, but we wanted to give it a little bit more structure just so we stay on point and focused on um, providing input out of this session to inform our goals and our work this year. So it's focused on doing uh, sort of improving uh, what we do this coming year. So just to kind of start off and sort of reground us for a minute, and um, just I had a series of slides with questions, um, just to give you the overview. It's sharing your own personal strengths, what you think you bring to the table. There has been discussion um, sometimes that people have strengths we're not tapping. So taking a minute to share with each other what we think we have to offer the committee that maybe. Um, Maybe we're already tapping that and maybe we're not. And so sharing our own strengths, the next slide we'll get to is um, sharing, that's okay, is sharing the strengths of the committee. What do we think we do well? Um, and then challenges, sharing our own challenges and how the committee can help us um, maybe 
uh, hurdle or obstacles personally with our involvement and sharing the committee's challenges. And that, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. There are questions on each slide and, and I want to pass out some paper and as we look at each slide, if you want to take five minutes before we share out loud, um, you could jot down thoughts if you want, if you think better with paper, you can just pass it around. Paper? And sure, I love the paper. Do you bring their own pens? I only brought a few. Yeah, I have a pen. Would you like some paper? Thank you. So if we just want to take a couple of minutes um, just to think about our own strengths. So you as an individual, um, we all are really dedicated, as has been mentioned, we put in a lot of time um, and energy in this committee and um, we're all here to support the children in, the, in our schools and our families and our district staff. Um, and we all went through a process to get elected to, to be here. So if we could just take a minute and think about um, regrounding it and why we're here. Why did you come here to this table or end or what makes this um, rewarding work for you? And what do you think, you can do these together, and what do you think you maybe have specifically as a skill set that you could lend to the group? So we just want to take a couple of minutes and think about that, and then we can share. Did you catch the, you got those questions, right, Vina? Yes. Okay. I didn't see that. Um. Okay.
for hours. <laughs> well, you don't have to write. I mean, you can share verbally. We I have like to write. We have. This is the bulk of our of our session um, here, so we have some time. So. Right. Okay. Oh, sorry. You want, you want to get started? No. Okay. I was just going to grab water for. Go grab water. water. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to start? I can wait. You can have water. Not like <laughs> Where are you going for the hat. water? <laughs> I thought you were going to run. Well, that too, actually. But, you know. Thank you. Do, do we have a member of the public? Did I see Dawn? We, yes, do. we do. Hello, Dawn. Hi, Nina. How can you see me? Thank, thank you for making the time to okay. join. Oh, thank you. Sure. It's summer. Freeze up some time. Nina, that actually raises the point. I didn't see a, a slot for public comment in our agenda. And I didn't know if that was required at each meeting. We might need to put one in on the end. We typically don't have public comment at special meetings. OK. I, I mean, it, it's not a requirement one way or the other. I don't have I, 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 I defer to, yep. That, that's right. That's how we had it um, in the past that we had the special meetings, right? Though it but is always nice to have public. I, 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 I mean, actually, if you guys want to say something, you know. <laughs> Do you have a speech prepared for us? <laughs> yeah, I'll just pull that right up. <laughs> so we'll just wait for Jen to get back yeah. with her hydration. Sure. I do always enjoy public comment, though. I just My point was that yes. I, I, I don't think we violated anything. Though. Okay. I always welcome. Okay, but I just have to say, I didn't see this because this popcorn one 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 was, I was at dance competition, so oh, okay. I was at the setup the night before, and then I had to have other people there. We're talking about doing something like this for youth and family services and the youth mission. I love this. Oh, great. Oh, so, thank you. This is nice. great. We did something similar for EHOP, and people who attended forums really appreciated having the takeaway. Yeah. Even though people mm -hmm. don't have a lot of paper anymore, sometimes it's just nice to have a little takeaway and digest it at your own pace. And, yeah. yeah. That's why I figured, yeah, we had to stick that back in there. Yeah, yeah. hopefully we can still get out. Okay, does anyone want to start with sharing a thought on your strengths? And why don't you start? <laughs> I would preface this by saying, I said to Nina, the one thing I cannot talk about is my own. Right, <laughs> it's probably how we all feel, right? I'm just going to say that right up front. Um, so, I'll start. Uh, why did I want to join school committee? Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, I am a huge believer in public schools. You know, I was born to public schools. I love the unique environment that is created in public education. And um, so right off the bat, I'm just a big supporter, and I've always wanted to do whatever I can as a parent or a volunteer to just support the mission because I believe in the mission and I love that public schools reflect the communities in which um, the schools operate and I think it's uh, they're just wonderful little microcosms and so that so that sort of brought me initially to doing any volunteer work at all and, um, and that's kind of my underlying thing the reason why I ran um, partly because I kind of always wanted to run but I never wanted to do it with my kids when they were younger. Um, and it is difficult. I think it's difficult to be on school committee and have younger kids um, going through the schools because 
you are an elected official and they are in classrooms with teachers. Who's, I don't know, I'm glad that I personally that I waited um, till my son had, my youngest son had his own identity out there and was known for himself. So my, anything I bungle here in this chair <laughs> will not impact him, um, hopefully. Um, and I'm, you know, obviously was concerned probably like you guys about growth um, in town. I love the diversification of our town and I'm excited about the energy. I, having grown up in Framingham, which is much bigger and much more diverse, I really am excited about what that all means for us. But we have to plan it and plan for it and accommodate it. So I wanted to be in a seat that could help do that. So that's kind of what brought me to run. Um, let's see, in terms of what makes it rewarding, um, I mean, a lot of things. It really, if, if the community feels informed and the community feels um, like they understand the district, that for me is rewarding because I think we are that link. And so I liked that we were doing more this past year or two to connect. Um, and it is very difficult, with the, again, with the limitations of public speech at our meetings and so forth. So I think um, the more that we can be transparent and make the community understand the district and the district understand the community, then I feel rewarded. Um, I also feel rewarded when the students and the staff feel safe, able to learn, staff and students, and take risks and sort of learn and fail. Again, that's kind of something I appreciate. Um, and the things I think I bring to the table, I'm, I'm pretty analytical. Um, Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I, li I like to, I mean, I'm maybe, I don't think I'm nearly as good a community communicator as, say, Nancy or Mina, but I think I'm, I'm a good, like, right-hand man person. I like to, to help enable success. That's kind of what I like to do, and I, I, I like to be analytical. I like to look at data. Um, I don't have a particular mission. You know, pre preconceived mission for the district. I'm sort of listening and adapting. I'm trying to listen and adapt as I go. Um, and I think with my kids being older, it's easier for me to do that. One's graduated and one's a senior now. So um, I, I don't know. I think that's probably it for me. I don't know what other strengths I have, but I am analytical, so I think I can do that. I don't think I'm the one to like necessarily make public speeches all the time. I'm making light of your analytical comment, but it's a good thing. I just told you that. <laughs> that first uh, policy meeting, I walked out of there like, oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I know. I'm like, that was impressive. <laughs> it is. So oh, yeah, it is, it is definitely a strength of yours. I agree. Mina, do you want to go? Sure, I can do that. Um, I think similar to what Amanda said um, about the belief in the public education system. For me, uh, coming to America as an immigrant and looking at the investment in the public schools and um, how that idea of public education works um, was amazing for me to observe and watch and how if we get this right, if we get our public education right, we are uh, setting our future up for success. So to me, this is a way to shape future. And that is very core to my beliefs. And that was the primary driver for me. And my own passion for education and how education can elevate um, lives. That is something uh, that I have experienced firsthand in my own life. Um, so that was uh, what made me run for school committee. Uh, besides the fact that I had some very kind souls who encouraged me to run, uh, Eunice Denman, Jean Bushman, so many others. So I decided to give it a try. Uh, so that was the reason why I ran. Um, in terms of my strengths, um, I think I have an approachable nature. Um, I have certain ease with numbers. Um, I love looking at data and data analysis is a strength of mine. And so it's management. 
In terms of what would um, make me feel, what was the question again? I'm sorry, man. It's just rewarding. Going what is it? What makes it rewarding for you? Uh, when you put in so much effort, uh, because we know the school committee work is a lot of work, um, when you see um, the impact of your work in the lives of students, families, um, I think that makes it all worthwhile to me. That's what I would say. Is there any other question I missed? I don't think so. Yep, yeah, so I'm all set. Thank you. So I guess going around in a circle, I can go. Um, so I actually, I started out as a local reporter in my beat was the school committee. And so I actually, I watched like 10 years of school committee meetings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you still saw it. And, and you started to run. And in the course of writing about some of the big things that the community got really um, energized, for lack of a better word, about uh, when Park was a big thing in the Common Core, and there was a lot of public um, debate on it. I was following it and researching it and interested in the topic, but also felt kind of on the other side of the table my ability to influence it in any way was a little more limited. I wasn't really, as a reporter, I had to kind of be the neutral person in the background, so I wasn't a community member in the same way, but I also wasn't at the table trying to help advocate for particular ways and that I mean not just on park and common core but difficult budgets and difficult things that the schools have been through over the years so I decided then uh, I also am a high-end user of the schools I have four kids um, <laughs> and when I ran for school committee the the first year I was on the committee my youngest daughter was in kindergarten and then I had two middle kids and my oldest was a senior so I, I spanned the district uh, and I actually I think Kind of in contrast to what you were saying, I actually liked uh, that my hand was in different schools to kind of bring that lens in a different way. That I had somebody in, in almost every school. I'm trying to think. I think I had nobody at Elmwood that year. That's awesome. uh, so that you know, that's kind of what got me here. Uh, what I feel like I bring to the table is I'm a I'm a people person. I like trying to bring people together. I like the idea of collaborating um, across different town boards with different groups of people. I like uh, collaborating not just with people, but in some cases when we're able to collaborate and share financial resources as well. I think that's a win for the schools and for the community. Uh, I liked, you know, like bringing, trying to hear more voices. The, I, I really was enthusiastic, I know you all know, about trying to do more office hours. Uh, it's not always practical to do it as much as I'd like, but I do like and hope we're able to continue that into the coming year. Uh, I'm going to lose my focus on what else I wanted to say. Uh, the social emotional learning is a big piece to me. I, 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 now that I'm no longer writing for the paper, I've gone back to my roots in social work and kind of interest in pursuing that piece of it. Um, and I, you know, I really I feel like I've been fortunate in working in with the schools here. And actually, the, these are the only schools my kids have been to, so I don't have a lot to compare firsthand experience for. But I feel like. I, like you, I don't have a particular one thing that I kind of came in and felt like I needed to solve this. I, I actually came in and I felt like my kids are being well educated and how can I help? How can I kind of give back to the fact that I am a high-end user and, and have benefited greatly from the schools? So that's, um, I feel like I'm missing some of the questions. Oh, in terms of what's rewarding is I find it really rewarding when we tackle a tough tough thing that the community brings forward or that trying to look at budgets and it, it feels like it's, it, this is maybe an adrenaline thing, it's not a good thing about me, but it feels like it's going to be a tough thing to solve or to find something that makes, brings people together and makes them feel like they've been heard and like that we're able to do something, but that feels good to me. Like when we had all the people in the was it this fall with the transportation and to, to feel like at the end of the day to be able to support the administration and, and kind of trying to navigate through that is rewarding to me and not just transportation but any issue that comes up. I will go on around the table. So with my back to the screen I missed some of these questions <laughs> in my notes so um, why did I choose to uh, become a part of the school committee? 
Um, honestly, I, it was because of the most recent presidential election. I was very um, concerned about who was appointed to lead education in the United States. I was concerned about how they might trickle down to my community. Um, I'm not as quite as high of a user as some of the other folks here, but I have two kids in the district, so um, you know there are certain things about public education which uh, you know I can part of my strengths. I've been in it for kind of a long time, so I wanted to make sure that certain things were preserved in the community and certain things um, weren't, you know, pop, wouldn't pop up in our community. Um, so it was, you know, one of those sort of reality checks for me. I think when I didn't think things would turn out the way they did, they did turn out that way, and so then I thought, all right, now I got to do something. Um, so that was really what motivated me. Um, what makes it rewarding? Uh, I think what makes it rewarding, and maybe it's the teacher in me, but when the kids come to the meetings and they either celebrate one of their successes, like the, the ballroom dancers or the writers, the, the brothers who won the awards, I love seeing that because it just really shows that the work that's happening in the district is, is mattering in, in huge ways to so many people. And so that's the piece that I think is most rewarding, is getting a chance to see um, things that I wouldn't see just through my own two children, you know, it's a broader view, I think. Um, and what I bring to the committee, I think, is, um, I mean, I've been in education for 23 years. I've taught elementary kids, middle school kids, adults, college kids. I think that I bring a real grounding in the reality rather than in the ideology of education. I think, um, you know, working in the four walls of a classroom in a building is not what most people experience, and lots of folks things, think they know a lot about it because they went to school. And so it's tricky because, yeah, you went to school, but school's a little different. And um, so I think that sort of that grounding in reality is important. Um, I also think that I've had, for the last 10 years, um, lots of interactions with teachers, administrators, and school leadership from all over the country, um, constantly involved in online discussions, forums, things like that. And so I, you know, it's it's good to hear what does work and what does not work in other parts of the country and other parts of the world too. There's there's a few folks from other countries on those forums. Um, and also, I mean, I've done a ton of research in this field. I have a very teacher-focused research base on implementing change, which hope which hopes hopefully helps with um, policy implementation and practice. But it was also on. Um, leadership style and how that affects teachers' implementation of change. And, and I think we have a great leadership team. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, one of the sort of sidebar good things about coming on board is that um, I think it helps when you have an, a good leadership team. Now I want to make sure that leadership team stays awesome. And so being a part of the committee is, is very helpful in that regard. Um, and the last thing I think that I bring is that I really have a mentality that it, any person is really their words and their behavior that matter to me. Um, and they do really matter to me. So if someone's words or behavior don't reflect what I think are sort of appropriate, that will, my cynicism will rise at that moment. But, but I think it's, you know, we're very fortunate that I think that our leadership and our, our group in general, um, we're collegial, we are able to work together and get stuff done. So I appreciate that. So I chose to run for school committee. It seemed to be a natural extension of my interest in education. I've been a student or an educator my entire life, and my term on the school committee thus far has found me as a student again. And I think that humbling experience is useful at any time in life. Um, I've had an array of teacherly assignments I teach at BU, I've taught at the University of Paris, I taught at the University of Innsbruck in Austria. I've taught in a prison for two years, medium security prison for men. Um, I taught in a law school. Um, I have a variety of encounters with educational settings to draw upon. Um, I also have two children. My daughter began her education in the Cambridge Public Schools which I thought was such a rich environment, a very diverse student body. Um, she kind of hit a wall when she was seven or eight because she had dyslexia. And the practice at the time was to remove her from the classroom, to provide her with reading instruction outside of the classroom. 
And that meant that her education was one of a sense of discontinuity. Um, being with the students, pulled out of the stream, and then being put back into the stream. When I moved to Hopkinton, I didn't know I was going to have this little boy, but I did. And I put him in the Hopkinton Public School, and he has a variety of what people call special needs. He has autism, he has dyslexia. And again, I found we were encountering a kind of wall where the, the kind of teaching he needed to succeed couldn't actually take place with 25 other kids around him. And so he had to be taken out of the classroom to be taught. And so his experience of education was looking a little bit like my daughter. It was looking fractured. And I have um, a very steadfast commitment to the parents of students with different needs in the community. Um, I do believe we have not yet arrived at that place, although we're all trying, administration included, to provide students with an equitable education. I don't think we're there. And I do believe in the public schools. I think the public schools should serve the entire public. I think we need to make sure that each kid is able to succeed on the terms that they best can succeed on. Um, that is my reward. If I see kids succeed, that is why I'm here. Um, I don't know if I have any skills. I'm, I'm not qualified to say so, but I do have experience. I have a lot of experience and I think and feel very strongly about education. I will do what I can to support what I feel is right and good. Um, I'm interested in learning as much as I can from this experience. It's been difficult in many ways. It's been engaging in many ways. It's been frustrating. It's been thrilling. Um, it's been like most experiences. It's a human being. It's a mixed bag. Um, I don't expect it to be perfect. I don't expect it to be smooth. Um, but I'm willing to work with that. I'm willing to work with the roughness of it because I've never seen a education go as smoothly as it did in the medium security prison where everyone was so well behaved. <laughs> in real life, that doesn't happen. Um, but I, I think one thing I do bring is a deep commitment to deliberation and to thinking carefully about important matters and not hastily racing towards a conclusion or reaching a decision without giving it ample time. My entire education has led me to believe that this is really important and to listen to as much as we possibly can before making a decision. Um, I think the gift of this school committee is we are five incredibly different people with different points of views and personalities and temperaments. I don't think one or the other is better or worse than another. I think the mix can be a real strength for us. Um, and I do believe moving forward that outlining process and procedure alone could kind of elevate us to the next stage and could help us be an even more excellent committee. Now, of course, I can still talk we have for <laughs> 43 more minutes, but I'll stop. <laughs> okay, so my first question is why have I chosen to work with Hopkinton Public Schools? Um, I think the answer to that is we've probably mutually chosen each other. Um, and I love being in Hopkinton. Um, I love public education very generally. I've spent probably 30 years in public education. I know a lot about how we do school, uh, but you do school very well here, and I've been very fortunate to kind of walk into something that very largely works. Um, is there still a whole lot of work to be done? Yes, there is, and I think that that's, you know, maybe we've already sort of talked about that, that thing where you have you know, the tension of a job right now, something needs to get done, it's pulling at you, and you have to know when to tap the brakes, when to be in cruise control, when to press hard on the accelerator, and all of that, I think, is the, the sort of awesomeness of being the superintendent in a district, right? You get to, to look at that from that sort of 30,000 foot level. 
Um, this is a really fortunate district. There are a lot of resources, there are a lot of people willing to help, and there's a lot of you know financial help here too, right? So the obstacles that you might find in another district, we really don't find here. Um, I think one of the greatest rewards of being in public education are really the children, right? So we can look at that on that really global level where you go to Steam Night in Elmwood or you go to graduation or National Honor Society induction or, or something like that, but I also have the great fortune of being able to walk into a classroom and see that kindergarten teacher or the first grade teacher just wrap her hand around a child's hand and like form an F. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing more beautiful than that, really, to see how caring that teacher is alongside that child. And it gets me to a place where sometimes I'm like crazy emotional when I have that experience. So there's something really deeply fulfilling, I think, about this work as well. Um, it's an exciting time to be here. Not only do I think that we have all that, the growth in our community and the diversification of our community, but we are living in a time where I think across Massachusetts and across the nation, we are starting to see social, emotional, and behavioral needs of kids that are dissimilar from anything we've seen before. So we're in the process of navigating those things too. Um, so I guess maybe just another thing that makes it rewarding are all of the, not just the children, but the grown-ups that I work with. Uh, I could not ask, literally I could not ask for a better leadership team um, and the partnerships and the teachers. Um, I'm, I'm really very fortunate to be here every day. So. What do I bring to the Yes, table? Yeah. we all had to spill it. So. <laughs> um, I guess not only Jen, I've been doing school for a really long time, so I think I'm going on, on 30 years. Um, and I guess after you do school for a very long time, as you say, you become kind of grounded in reality, but you don't lose hope. You know what I mean? There's always that, that sort of hope that drives your every day. Um, and there are changes that, that you get to make, and that's that's something that I think I, I do pretty well. I think I'm good at communication. I'm good at having a passion for the job. I work really hard every day. Um, and so, you know, if, if there are places where, you know, I, I need to grow as a superintendent, so you know, I'm very willing to do that. Um, so I think that that growth mindset piece is something that I also bring to the job. Yeah, I guess there's okay. one last thing that I will say about teaching and learning, is it's cyclical. Like right now, we're in that sort of summer downtime thing that happens, but next year, we're going to open our doors and we're all going to be reborn and you can redefine yourself every single year in public education, which is not unlike a lot of other jobs that have that 12-month kind of continuity. Of, it just keeps happening. We have a unique structure to our calendar that's awesome. Hopefully we're tapping into that rhythm as a committee by doing this. You know, yes. now. we're taking a minute to reflect that same rhythm within our work. So yeah. Okay, thank you. I think that it really helps ground this conversation a lot. If we could move on to the next slide, please. Stop. Okay. If that's okay. Did you want to say something, Nina? Yeah, I, you know, it's been interesting listening to everybody and finding that commonality. Um, and the belief in public education, education in general. And also, it looks like all of us get excited when we see those moments with kids and the impact. And uh, Dr. Karen also talked about the staff and the adults who are in this business. So uh, clearly, uh, that's what's motivating us. That's what we got us here. That's what keeps us motivated. So just building on those um, thoughts about our own roles and uh, what brings us here, if you just take a moment and think about as a committee, um, you know, obviously we're quite young, we had two brand new members and some of our most senior members rolled off the year that we joined. Um, and so we had a first year superintendent uh, and there was quite a bit of transition. Also in the midst of a town that was that is continuing to grow rapidly around us. So. Um, we, with that very transitional backdrop, you know, if we could think about what we're most proud of that we actually accomplished in this past year, and um, specifically, if anyone, if you've had any examples of a family or staff person um, or experience you've observed that has reflected a positive impact of our work, and you want to share that, that's great. 
and um, learn hearing from each other about what our strengths are, do you think that there may be better ways that we could leverage our in some of these individual talents um, as the in the committee work? So that's kind of the three areas there. You just give it a little bit of thought. Particularly, I think that you know, in terms of focusing on outputs of this process, number three, thinking about how we can best leverage our strengths as individuals to improve the strength of the team. Can I answer number one? Or we write. We don't, have, we don't have to write. If, you get, if you're feeling primed and yeah. ready to talk, we could just talk. We don't have to write. I'm very proud of Nancy's introduction of office hours. Woo as we talked about earlier, I feel like that was such a good move to communicate more with the community, to make ourselves available. Not that I have any idea what it was like before, in truth. I know we've always had a very solid, strong school committee. Um, I haven't heard otherwise. But I think it, it was really wonderful to have that conduit between the community and us. So I think that was a great move, this move towards transparency um, has been really good. So bravo. Thank you. I, I actually want to echo that same thought. Uh, you know, in terms of what is it as a school committee, we did um, fabulously this past year, new school committee, fairly new. Uh, my service a year older, uh, but still very new. I felt we stepped more and more into the community and uh, became accessible to many people and built strong relationships. And um, that was a huge strength for us. Um, office hours um, in many, many places and in a new community that has just come up, I think that was a great uh, uh, move. And I think there was willingness in the entire committee. Nancy led the path and we all uh, brought it to that idea and supported that work. Um, I also felt that uh, our superintendent was very willing to step into the community as well. Um, I think that some of the work that we did through the community communications group, uh, being you know willing to step into that and you know share the strategic plan with so many people who are not connected with the schools on a day-to-day -day basis, but are taxpayers and are invested in our schools and care for the kids and the public schools. Uh, I thought that was great. I also think we built intergenerational partnerships, working uh, with the seniors and laying some of those programs. Um, I think the relationship with our select board um, and the work that we did around the budget time, I thought it was much smoother than what I saw in my first year. So I, so I think the biggest um, achievement that I see is community engagement um, across the board as a leadership um, and through our leadership. So I'm very uh, thrilled and excited about that accomplishment. Yes, yeah, so I just want to piggyback off of that. It, I really feel like we all brought ourselves out into the community in different ways, that we were all there you know, in different ways, different times at office hours, Hopkinton 101, the intergenerational stuff. In, I think that is one strength that we could tap into more of even, is we all have like really unique, and I guess everybody's unique, really isn't in unique, don't really go together, but we have unique pockets of the community that we touch and the ability to kind of bring that out and carry ourselves into the community in different ways I think is even still just beginning that I, I'm excited for kind of where we can go from here and to hopefully harness that together and to take those different ways that we all have of being and, and merge them a little bit more maybe but to feel proud of the start that we have and to, see where we're going this year is exciting. And one of the comments from um, town meeting even speaks to that, the gentleman who stood up and, and basically said, thank you, like, now this all makes sense, right? But, but that sort of you know, reinforces what everyone has already said, that now you know, that it's not just here it is, take it or leave it, it's here it is and here's why it's like this. And, and I think people appreciate that. 
We all did. Town meeting was actually a real high. It was for a high. yeah. It, was it, it just people. It, the presentation was so well received, mm -hmm. and it yeah, very good, strong reception. Yeah. yeah, right. I, I like that. You know, I think again. I think this is something that we, as a town of Keel on the municipal side and the mm -hmm. school side, and I think that we as a group are um, helping with this issue. But I think with the growth comes a need for increased um, formality sometimes in our procedures and our processes. When, mm -hmm. when it's a small town and you know six people kind of know each other and on the handshake things can get done and everyone's grown up together, things work a certain way. And then it, it is, there's a certain tipping point in growth and diversity and whatnot when it becomes necessary to formalize things that in the past were more loose. And I think um, we started this year sort of taking a fresh look at what we're doing by starting out by going to the MASC conference and by even just saying, wow, let's sit and listen to what we should be doing and what the what the best in class ways are of doing things. Let's hear different superintendents and school committee members share what they're doing and then let's kind of look at our own work. And I think we started that this year. Um, I mentioned I personally as a re as a resident I come up against some changes on the municipal side that are also I see us tightening the screws a bit, like just making the process clearer and more predictable, whether it's Reserving a field, or get you know whatever it is that you were doing, um, we seem to be at a place in the town where we are kind of formalizing and institutionalizing things that maybe worked a little bit more uh, casually before. And I think that's important for clarity for all residents. So when you're new mm -hmm. to town, you know what to do. And I appreciate that you started that, and that we seem to be moving in that direction. We all did. I mean, we really all had a piece of that. I want to share a story. Are we there yet, or do we have? Um, yeah, share away. Yeah. Um, so th there's a parent um, who, whose child uh, has a special need, and, um, and you know, of course, uh, special needs as we label them, they're so broad and so different. Uh, but apparently, that child was evaluated. Uh, and uh, they complimented on the services that have been provided to this child in our district. And uh, that particular gentleman who did the evaluation said, I've seen many children in many, many districts. It looks like something's going really well in Hopkinton. Um, so that, that, was, uh, that was something that I was very happy to hear. Um, the other part that I want to say is that besides the fact that we went out into the community, I think we also made the time to step into the schools as a committee. At every event that was possible, we showed up uh, and made the time to support all the programs. And in that regard, I want to talk about Mr. Scott, Doug Scott, um, and all his robotics programming. And uh, he uh, expressed um, how supported he feels by the school committee and that we are there, you know, whether it's the student interviews, you know, he, he throws those opportunities at us and we have grabbed them. And so I think that relationship, uh, that's, those are stories that make you want to keep going. And to your point, Mina, too, also like um, Mr. Craig and, and, um, and D King and all the coaches, I mean, every, you know, sort of, small offshoot of the school, whether it be robotics or athletics or music or art or theater, whatever, whatever club a, ch a child decides to align himself or herself with, they, they seem successful, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it, not just like because they almost won a state championship, but just because their performances are so incredibly good or their experiences are good or they come back from a field trip but, and they're so excited about what happened, um, even if they didn't win anything, they're still excited about what happens. So I think that speaks a lot to the folks who are um, organizing and creating all of these amazing programs, clubs, activities, that kind of thing. I'm curious, I think like, we seem to be able to ignite a passion. Mm -hmm. in, in, yep. in, you know, seeing kids who have graduated, you know, through my son and his friends, I mean, I think we do actually ignite some unique passions in kids that are going to be lifelong right? through, through a lot of these clubs. And, Um, do we have any thoughts on number three? Do we think 
Okay, can um, I just return you... to number two? Sure. Because I want to make sure we answer this question. Our work as a school committee, specific, specific examples of families or staff, because I just want to hear more. <laughs> Have we done anything useful that's been acknowledged by others as a school committee? That's, I think, and my guess in, in the emphasis on school committee is, I think, an important distinction because I think sometimes when things are going well in the schools, we kind of reap the benefits of um, just by association that things that have gone well in the district that we may not have actually um, been responsible for. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> have knowledge of even. Yeah. Yeah. Or have knowledge yeah. of you. Right. Uh, you know, I think where our most impact is is obviously budget and policy in terms of like on individual and I would have to kind of go back through. I think people do reach out that are happy with things that they perceive that we've done. Right. Um, but they're not always things that we have personally done. We take credit sometimes for things that maybe was more over on your side. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I do think in ways you influence some of the things that we get done. Do you know, so you'll say that you are analytical. And you are. And <laughs> <laughs> you because we are. might work together on this. Okay. Yeah. But it's really helpful when we do things like get policy in place or you know, really analyze something that's going to come before the school committee and the ways in which that impacts. It does, in fact, trickle down to teaching and learning. Or I think when the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education said that they wanted kindergartners to have dyslexia screening, I really think because of CPAC and you know because of your role in it, we were poised to be there, like the first district in in the state to get that in place because we were ready, you know. So I think that there are things that come because of the things that you are passionate about as individual members, and it really does help children. You know, we joke about your analysis thing, but it's, we're going to keep that going very, all year. I can just say that we're not going to let that go. <laughs> Could be a two-year thing. Um, but also to that point, I think that if, even if we go back to the previous question, I think, uh, speaking for myself, but I know we've talked about this, a few of us, when you join school committee, you think it is this, mm. and it really is this, mm. and I think a lot of us have a vision of, not you, but it is, <laughs> oh boy, this, yeah. but it, you just, you have a vision of what you think you're going to be able to um, affect in terms of change and, and influence in terms of policy and practice. And the reality of that is so different once you actually get into it and you realize what your job really is. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for a community member to come and say, oh, that was a really good superintendent evaluation. You, did. you know, like they're not going <laughs> to say that. Exactly. But that is our job. Yeah. And, and it is sort of like by, by default that we, we're doing something good because people will say that you're doing something good. And so, um, so it's hard to say like, job school committee because our role it really is pretty narrow yes, and in, in yes. terms of what yes. we can do but um, but what trickles out of that narrow role is what you know matters I think yes yeah. like think about elementary school building committee think about planning board right that's huge right. the work that you do there but for people it feels right like they don't see doesn't, it right. doesn't right. feel like building right. committee yeah One it's just not a thing. building and people go wow that's right. A right. Yeah, exactly. right but well right. and that has a lot of impact on on students obviously right. but i back to kind of stuff that we don't the people think that we do that we don't <laughs> right. one of the first office hours the office hours we did last summer during the farmers market there were a couple of parents that came that their concern really was about uh, placement in a math course at the middle school. Right. Right. And really, they were looking for our help in that, and that is something that is so far outside of right. what we, we actually do. But I think there are times in those cases where we're able to help connect people with the right people to help, maybe not in, in the math case, it seemed like a lot of them knew the right avenue. But there have been other cases during the year where people have kind of said they're frustrated with or they're want to reach out to somebody about and they think it's the school committee and to right. be able to give them the name of the appropriate person is helpful. And we're also influenced by media and movies and the portrayal of the school board and movies and things like that. So you think this is what you do oh, yeah. and it's not. It's not. And do you so watch a lot of movies with the school board? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I'm thinking of like all of the old like Stand By Me and, oh, yeah. and the one about the, you know, the teacher who did the AP course with yeah. the students and you know like all those you see this image of a school board and they're all so 
involved in every aspect of the school, and it's not that we're not, it's just that we're not directly involved in every aspect of the school. Yeah, I think, I mean, one of the things I think we did well um, was work with you, because I think, and I think that is where right. we have the picture, and I think, even though it doesn't make it to this table or maybe on camera, like the questions that sort of teasing out the details of some of the things that um, come to us and some of that happens sort of one-on-one -on -one and you know you're being open to our questions and our being open to the information that's provided I think as a as a group that has been a strength of this year you know I think that we have had you know it's not sometimes it's very frustrating maybe on both sides but I think overall I think that exchange makes the whole team stronger which I think was yes. evident at town meeting because uh, like the budget and all that, the work, it came through exchanges that were sometimes fun, sometimes not as fun. <laughs> but I think there, we got a better product. And I think we, I like that we get a better product um, because yes. we are all thoughtful and strong and, you know, we're, we're strong but we're, we're able to listen. So I think, I think that we are a kind of a cool group. I, I just wanted to add to that because it, the only really specific examples I've actually heard are people complimenting school committee on asking hard questions, and particularly Mina. I've heard several people mm -hmm. say she asks really good questions, mm -hmm. and that's great to bring that whole level of commitment to, to asking things that otherwise might make people mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable, because that's really what's in the public's mind. It's not about, you know, our ideas about revising the wording of policy. Don't think that keeps anybody awake. Although I hope not. <laughs> if you have families, I will say, who are very thankful that we made slight modifications to the travel policy. But yeah, field yes. Field trip policy. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Good. yes. Well, and back to policy, the policy, and I can't remember what the name of the policy was, but where it was talking about providing for kids who, like a particular outfit was required for the activity and to provide for kids who wouldn't be able to otherwise purchase or obtain that particular thing. That That's a big thing to families in particular. Yeah. Right. I, I, I agree on the policy front that I felt that there was a, a very thoughtful and methodical approach to it, which was shared with all of us, you know, in terms of the approach, the priorities, including the labeling. Um, so I think a lot of thought went to it, and I'm actually eager to see where we will go um, in that space in the year ahead and um, stay ahead uh, in terms of the policies that we want to come up with what's happening latest. So I'm, I'm pretty certain that will happen this year. Are we ready to move on, do you think? Um, should we move on to question number three? Is that what you meant? Yes, uh, sure. Yes, question number three. I can speak to that a little bit in terms of, um, so the question says, are there better ways to leverage the strengths of individuals on our team and what suggestions do you have um, for better utilizing their talents? I think this exercise that we just did about what our strengths are and what our interests are, that's very helpful. Um, I think we are kind of aware, but we have never called that out. Right, and uh, to me, the way to leverage it is to first and foremost recognize, call those strengths out. Um, at the same time, accept different styles and perspectives. Um, we all bring something different. We just talked about that around the room. Um, you know, Nancy talked about her uh, experience being in the schools K through 12. Uh, that's a very unique, ex uh, you know, perspective. Um, you know, Jen talked about her experience as an educator and grounded in reality and not just ideology. Uh, I think that's a very unique perspective. Likewise with uh, what uh, Meg shared about her being in education all her life, either as a student or an educator. So there are so many strengths. Uh, Amanda, I don't want to put you in the spot again about being analytical. Uh, I think besides analytical, there are many, many other skills that you bring to the table. I think you're very thoughtful in, um, in your approach, deliberate. Um, so I think there are different strengths and perspectives, yet we have different passions and different styles. So to me, it is important to accept us as we are. 
uh, our strengths, styles, perspectives, all of us as we are, and stop to ask when we are uh, in a difficult situation or a challenging conversation or even otherwise to say, uh, you know what, Jen has been an educator. Let's ask what does she think about this? You know, uh, Amanda has uh, this passion and she has a high schooler. Does she have a different perspective? It's, I don't have a high schooler, so I wouldn't know. So that may be something that you are able to um, speak to. So I think not only should our uh, assignments and strengths be, uh, uh, you know, our assignments or the work that we take on uh, be maximized, but also we need to stop and ask uh, and listen to one another. Yeah, I, like, I like what you said, Mina. I think um, when we get to our discussion, which I think came up at the meeting I missed this last meeting about um, liaison roles and subcommittees and so forth, um, it, I think it's an interesting question for me to ask, um, are there opportunities for things that maybe always fall on the chair and you've lived the year of this, so that, you, that where we can maybe parcel out some of those things to tap strengths of others. Um, you know, some of you know your experience or awareness of like the history with Legacy Farms and how that agreement and the growth and the planning there could have been useful. Maybe in some of our discussions or your communication with the community is stellar. Like I don't know how we tap. I don't know if there are opportunities to take a role that was very large or, and um, find opportunities where you know the chair or, or vice chair or any of us might call in sort of an expert skill for something as needed. I, I don't know. It just seemed like there were times I thought, gee, I wish Jen would say something <laughs> or you know bring bring some of your experience or you know, gee, I wonder, you know, maybe, maybe those were times that I thought if I spoke it would be bad for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, if I was quiet. I was filtering. Filtering. Mm -hmm. okay. So I don't know. Things. I just feel like that we. I don't know. I, do, I would like to see us maybe pull a little bit more out of each of us. Um, and I'm not sure how to do that. But I'm certainly more aware from our conversation, you know, a couple of slides ago, that, that we do have strengths. And maybe just keeping that front of mind, maybe alone, will help. Um, I like that kind of lens of trying to think about that. I don't necessarily yeah. have the, a concrete thing to add to it, but I like the, the question to kind of look at where are the bringing in expert skills. Yeah. Um, in the interest of time, I'd like to maybe seriously move on to the next slide. Are you okay? Where was presenting? You're presenting. Are you okay with that? No, no, no. Go right ahead. Let's move forward. Oh, here we are. And we did. Okay, so um, this is just a, a general question of um, obstacles. I mean, we all, we all balance a lot of things, you know, home life and jobs and, you know, whatnot. Uh, and we all have areas that we are, you know, well-versed in maybe what school committee does and maybe areas where we need training. We all have different understanding of issues that come up. Um, were there any obstacles that came up for you this year that you, you maybe got in the way of your doing the job you hoped you would be able to do? Um, and is there anything that we all can do to help remove those obstacles? Um, that's really what the question is here. This is from an individual perspective. I mean, I, I can, do you want to take time to write or do we want to think out loud? Think out loud. Think, think out, out loud. loud. We're primed and ready to go. Okay, like so, thought. I mean, for me, obviously being a first year school committee member, um, I tapped Nancy several times in the beginning of the year to say, what's happening? What do we do? Why are we? What are we doing? How does this work? Um, and I think, um, so understanding for me has been a hurdle, but it wasn't, I, it's natural that it was a hurdle because it was the first year. So um, we have spent time talking about our onboarding process for new members, and I think that orientation process will help probably the next new person. Um, a little bit, but sometimes it just takes time. Um, so, you know, for me that was a big thing. And coupled with the obstacle of understanding is the constraint of open meeting law mm -hmm. and wanting to ask questions. So there, there's an interesting issue where, as someone with a question, I want to tap the person I think who can answer it. 
and then maybe I find out there's a different person, but then that becomes a serial conversation. So then I can't actually ask anybody else. <laughs> I'm just sort of stuck. And then we get to our meetings, which again is kind of why we had this time set aside, because in our meetings we're very agenda focused. And, mm -hmm. um, so there were definitely times when I had questions and I could only get to a point. And that's frustrating. I'm not sure how, again, open media is what it is. It's there for good reason. I think the public should see what we're doing. But at times I felt like that was a huge obstacle to us just talking. Can we just talk? And we, we can. So I don't know. I'm not sure what we can do about it. But those things for me were tough. I agree with you. I think it was not fully understanding the process of each endeavor. Yeah. Um, and not knowing what steps we were supposed to take, where we were supposed to come from, feeling like there wasn't enough information coming to us. and. I think open meeting law does get in the way of just like turning to someone and saying, well, what is this about? Um, and so it limits what we can do and, and what we can say because if it's not on the next agenda, we can't even talk about it. And, you know, I, I think it, it's kind of a, a field with all sorts of minds in it that we can step on at any moment. Um, when we're negotiating this stuff, which makes it really tricky, and I wonder if we can do something to make the processes more clear, mm -hmm. transparent, so we know what's going on. Because I feel like my lack of understanding of how this works, this political realm, and I don't even know if I really want to understand how it works, if I'm to be honest, um, gets in the way of my being able to contribute to the committee and I don't know in the way I would have liked because I didn't have any preconceived ideas of how I was going to do this. Is there anyone else sharing? So I would piggyback off a little bit of what you were saying, Amanda, about the like open meeting law on, on the one hand is a great friend of I think any public board in, in really making sure that we're accountable to the public and doing things in a, a transparent way but it also at times it, when you need clarification kind of between meetings it our ability to kind of ask if I you know if I ask Jen and then Jen can't talk ask Meg and kind of that piece is a pitfall yeah. uh, in terms of, or not a pitfall, but it, it's an obstacle in trying to be prepared sometimes, I think. I don't have necessarily the answer to that, but that's always something, the, a, a lens that I think is, we all have to carry it differently. Yeah. One of the things, I, I mean, I agree with you, it's restrictive in so many ways. I mean, it needs to be there, but we've talked about this too, how you just, you can't, you're like, I can't even ask this question. But I think, um, you know, even as Mina brought in the, the sample goals, one of the things that I find I'm doing a ton is if something's on the agenda and I don't feel like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll email you, but I think I do a ton of sort of my own research, right. yes. which is really helpful. And then at least when you get to the meeting, if you do make a statement, it's grounded in something that you've read. It may or may not be appropriate for our district, but at least you have something to, to stand on instead of to walk in without which is another part of the job that I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize is that yes. you got to do a ton of research in order to figure out what the heck is going on right. half the time. So I think that, you know, it's not like Google is your best friend, but you got to like make sure that you find out if you can't ask the question here or at least speak about it with other people that you do the legwork before the meeting to understand to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. But see, this is something maybe, um, Mina, we can take as an action item to get clarity on, because I think we do all ask you to do a lot of questions. And, right. and then the, you in turn pass this on to whichever administrator or person owns an issue. And there's a lot of very in, informative information that can be revealed through our research um, on our own, getting clarity in preparation for meetings. But then we never actually have a time when we share what we've learned. Um, right. So I, I guess my, my action and question is to check back with our legal counsel on what the best mechanism would be. We talked about having the question document. We're not sure if that's okay. <laughs> we're, we're uncertain of what we can do. And yet it is really a shame, and I think very frustrating, I would imagine, for the administrative team to feel like the same questions come 
onesie twosie from all of us and year why are you guys learning from each other? Yeah, same question. Year yeah. after year, there is no institutional knowledge. Right. So there we go, there's that. And then there's no sharing even in this year. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, I feel like I've gained a lot, I mean, I have lots to learn, but I've learned a lot by asking questions and the administrative team has been so patient in providing information and it stops with me. Because what am I to do with it? I can't bring it to a meeting. We don't have time on the agenda for a debriefing of our research. But I would like to get guidance from MASC or our legal counsel on what we can do there. And I think there's there's a lot that the community would be interested in that we learn, you know, that would be very appropriate to share some of it. That right. there's no reason it should stop with me or you or you. Uh, I don't know. So that that definitely I think was probably frustrating on both sides. I imagine somewhat during the year. And it does also, it, when one of us has asked a lot of questions and gotten some good answers to that, it's often information that we would all benefit from. Absolutely. And it's, you know, you might ask a question that I never would have thought I even needed to know the answer to, that it might kind of, and if there was a vehicle that we could share that, it would, like you said, prevent asking multiple questions. We don't have of the same, you know, each of us asking similar but slightly different questions. I don't know. That. In the internet, I want to share this with you that in my first year, um, I apologized to Dr. McLeod so many times because I would ask yeah, so many cool. detailed <laughs> questions because I wanted to know what I'm signing off on. What is it that I'm voting on? This million dollar, uh, you know, item on the items by consensus. And I remember the first meeting, I said, I'm not voting on it, I'm abstaining from it because I don't know what I'm signing off on. So um, I think it, it's, it's a process um, uh, that we go through where we want to understand all the details. The good thing, I think, on the administrative front is they've been extremely patient with any questions I've never felt that a question is unwelcome yes. uh, by the administration. Uh, I, I think to what Nancy was alluding to uh, is perhaps we need to look to ways where some of this could get into the package for all of us to look at mm -hmm. and uh, make that a little bit robust perhaps. We can look to those ways. I mean, I, I think there is a lot of information, but if there is this additional level of detail that can be brought forth, maybe that's something to look at. There is, yeah, uh, you know, my um, challenge that I want to share in the past year, you know, uh, uh, I think Jen spoke to it a little bit earlier that you walk into the school committee, you know, wanting to do all of these things, but you realize what you can really do. Um, and um, so there are sometimes frustrations. The work is challenging. So when you have when you have a concern, uh, not having a forum. I guess to discuss it. I think that's what we talk, we were talking about earlier. To be able to voice some of this, that the process failure, right, or, or the pro I, I don't know if the, the word is failure. I think it could be a lack of understanding. It could be it's not working, or it could be a combination. Uh, I think not having that is a challenge. And I think what we are trying to do here by discussing and also laying out goals. Uh, will hopefully help us uh, moving forward. That's that's the hope, and hopefully having um, uh, periodic checkpoints. I think Nancy uh, did that, and she was looking to do that more often. But we, as we all know, the year once September hits, we all get so busy with you know so many things, and the budget season comes, and there were so many things going on the past year that to carve out time to discuss some of uh, these matters uh, and get some guided conversations, uh, I think was challenging from a timing perspective also. So perhaps those are things we should build on um, what Nancy started off last year um, with the relationship with MASC. That's my thought as a solution, a possible mm -hmm. solution. Any other hurdles? I mean, are people feeling okay with time? Like just 
time, and you mentioned that it is time consuming, and it is more time consuming than, than I think the person who rolled off school committee who told me, oh, it's just a couple of meetings. <laughs> so funny. I, I told me the same that thing. was like, a, that was the recruiting message. So lies, <laughs> that's why we <laughs> tell more people in. Two meetings a month, big deal. two or three hours each. Um, I mean, you know, I guess I would encourage us, or I hope that we, again, I'm not sure how we do this, but I, to when it becomes apparent that we have a personal time constraint, for whatever reason, we all have things that come up, being able to tap somebody else mm -hmm. to step in. And I think I give credit to Mina, you tapped Jen for planning board, and I yes. think that was great. And, and Jen plugged right in, hit the ground running, and you know, was able to do what you, you admitted you were unable to do. We're not perfect. And mm -hmm. I think I like, you know, that you set the example of being able to say, hey, you know what, I'm crying uncle. My life is like, yeah. crazy right now. I can't do that extra thing. We need to do it. Let me hand off. And I think we need, as long as we are willing to support each other in that way, that will help a lot. Absolutely, and I'm very thankful to Jen still, and maybe there's more coming her way through the growth study uh -oh. committee. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't want to use it. She can't see me over here, so she doesn't know the face I'm making right now. Um, um, there is, a, sorry, was someone saying something? Yeah. Megan. Yes. It is a huge time commitment, and I, I don't know if we can make that clearer at the outset for people who are coming on or who are running for election because it is immense. I find I'm spending more time on school committee than I am on certain aspects of the work that I'm actually paid for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm very worried about that. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of it has to do with being um, a new person to the committee and having to do more research and thinking, but I find the research I often do before the school committee has very little to do with what unfolds during the meeting <laughs> <laughs> because of the idiosyncratic nature of the gathering and of the specificity of the district's concerns, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I'm overwhelmed. I am. I am overwhelmed by the time commitment. And mm -hmm. so is, is an answer to find more people to serve on the school committee to spread this out a little bit? So people who have full-time jobs can participate instead of the privileged. Or to focus the work through goals. Or focus the work you know, through more exact goals and not spread our energies out over so many committees and liaison roles mm -hmm. that are, I mean, my, my, as a researcher, I know that the more you can focus on one thing, the more fruit you're going to harvest. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm looking at too many little things and not doing a good enough job with any of them. And so I feel like my time and energy would be better spent were I to say focus on educational programming mm -hmm. or what educational programs are working mm -hmm. and, and what's being taught and what's being developed and how can we learn more about that to share with the public. Except that right. doesn't fit right. the purview of the um, school committee. <laughs> and that's part of the problem, well, right? Well, I, I totally I, agree I, with you. And, and I beg to differ because I've been reading, and the time I should be doing my other research, school committee meeting minutes from all over the state and the way that they allocate um, duties and tasks and educational programming was one big subcommittee. Mm. So I, I think there are ways that we can look at shifting things around for anybody that's feeling I mean, it shouldn't be taking away from your ability to do full or anybody's it historically actually the school committee was like a couple of years ago it was almost all full-time working people i will be working full-time right. in the fall uh that said i mean i think some of the work just is what it is that it, it there are committees that by charter require somebody on the school committee to be part of that right. uh, but I, I don't think we all have to take all the pieces. I think if there are ways to kind of shift so that people that are able to take or interested in taking certain pieces do so, and to for the rest of us to try to say, okay, we know you've got this, bring back what you need to the full committee. And for all of us to be okay realizing kind of like, I think, Mina, it was you who, or no, actually, I think it was you, Amanda, sorry, said that at different points, we all have different things going on in our lives and that it's okay to say, I can't do this. I, 
I can only focus on this piece right now and to know that we've got each other to lean on and to take the pieces that may not either be as A, interesting or be as um, affordable in our what time constraints we have. I like that a lot. Okay. And I think that that is exactly what makes a team stronger than individuals. Because, you know, I think in our first year where we're all new and we don't really know each other, we don't know what we're doing and something, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, it's hard to have that kind of trust in your in your teammates because you don't know that when you right. don't do it, is it actually going to get done? Like you just we didn't know right. each other. You know, I think it's reasonable. But I think um, Dr. Kavanaugh had pointed out that in previous iterations of our board, there were like certain people who were really good with numbers and all about right. the budget and the, the, the finance questions will just defer because mm -hmm. that person's got it covered and the, that person can go deep on the questions on our behalf and do a better job. And then I don't have to do that. So that part of the agenda, I can maybe get comfortable but not go crazy. You know, and I, it, I like your idea of like using our, our strengths a little bit more and not all doing everything. And, and to be able right. to be fluid with it, to realize yeah. that, you know, the, what pops up at different times, both in the committee's work and in our personal lives, is going to be different and to be able to kind of have that back and forth and to be able to say, I can't do this or I can do this. Um, Nancy, uh, you know, to your idea about these assignments and you know how we can be better at it, I, I also want to add to the fact that we need to, you know, uh, we talked about this a little bit at the last meeting, is to relook at the, uh, all the committees and mm -hmm. uh, have a very, uh, um, you know, we need to be very deliberate in our approach to how we are creating those assignments. Do we need those assignments? Um, I find that sometimes we step into the work that is truly under the purview of Dr. Kavanaugh. Dr. Kavanaugh has been really good in pushing back. Um, and I appreciate that. And I think that's important to say, where are the areas where, you know, we are having an oversight and monitoring role. We are not in the business of execution. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes in, you know, we, we talked about our passions earlier and our interests in education. Um, and I think sometimes we cross over. Mm -hmm. So I think just defining some of that um, and uh, taking off some of the things which are not needed uh, and how uh, we are to do our business and I think we talked about strengths, you know, clearly community engagement is a passion you have. I do too, we all do, but there may be a strength for um, some of us versus a strength in a different area with the two educators that we have. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we, we should really look at how we have uh, organized our work. That may be something for us to look at. <laughs> I just want to be cognizant of the time, um, so I, sure. I would we be okay with moving on? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so our challenges, th this is sort of more about us as a committee, was there any time during the year that you felt the process sort of broke down or that something didn't work efficiently, that our committee work wasn't you know, optimal because of uh, our process or our approach? And would you be willing to share what that was? Again, be mindful just in case, just to remind you of confidentiality or anything related to executive session. Um, what, why do you think we struggle with the process or whatever it was that might have caused you some difficulty? And is it, what do you think we could do to improve it? Do you have any suggestions? I think we, we've already begun to talk about this. Yeah. I think we covered most of this in what we were just saying not to take away from attending to it again. No, no, no. Um, but I, I think it is a good question for us to, to think about how can we make more clear certain steps which we cannot talk about publicly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, there we are. Mm -hmm. That produces the problem. <laughs> that reveals it to all. Um, there, there is a challenge that I want to speak to um, as uh, the way I saw it, uh, if I may. Go for it. Yes, go. Yeah. Um, 
I think what might help us, um, I think we're very good at celebrating what is working very well, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think we struggle to express what is not working in a non-threatening manner. Um, I feel like sometimes we are abrupt, sometimes, you know, because of uh, not wanting to upset someone, we're trying to find the ways. And I, I think um, the more we acknowledge the areas that are growth opportunities for us, the better we will be as a district. So I would like us to find ways um, to find better reporting, which highlights strengths, absolutely, um, and at the same time highlights growth opportunities. And I would like us to not hesitate from having some of those conversations. That's a great point. And I think what might help is some kind of training to um, to learn how to communicate in a in a manner that can be received well, and um, looking to create that culture uh, where we can accept some of these concerns and solve them together. Mina, can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Um, when you said reporting, could you say what you meant by that? Mm. Um, so, for instance, um, you know. DESI captures a lot of information, mm -hmm. right? And um, every so often I go look at some of that data. And sometimes I wonder why are they capturing this data? Why are they capturing data related to race of students? Why are they capturing data related to race of teachers, right? I, I don't know the answer to it. I can make assumptions, uh, but I don't know. How do we bring that back? We look at MCAS results and they look great, but is MCAS the only measure of success? Um, what other measures should we be looking at? And I think the more we define what these reporting measures and tools are to be, that might um, get us to a place where we are able to look at um, issues which are right in our face. So to me, that's one part of data analysis like data will tell you some things but you have to dig deeper and i think we have a very competent administration that can guide us as to what that means and i i think we need to have those conversations i would like to see those conversations happen i love the idea and i well i love the idea and i think i mentioned this to you of you know we receive a lot of reports throughout the year whether it's the Update on the arts program, or update on um, you know whatever uh, yeah. student services, or um, the capital budgeting. Mm -hmm. or, there's a there's a set of reports that we receive, and what felt to me this year as a new person was that when I heard we we're going to get an update on X, I was thinking, oh, we're going to hear these things, and then I saw the report. And it didn't align with what I thought I was going to, the kinds of information I thought I would hear. So then, of course, the onslaught of questions happens, <laughs> like blah. And um, so I'm feeling like we could work with the administration a lot more effectively if we define well in advance, like when we're going to get a report on transportation or whatever, it lets us sit down two months before and agree, so we're not all asking for different things, agree on what the committee would like to see in terms of information and interpretation by the experts, like both the data and the meaning of the data. And then they, I, I fear that the poor administration feels like they put something out and then we all ask different questions and they're trying to, you know, answer. And if we could just be clear about what we think we need, mm -hmm. I think it would be probably welcome. I'm guess I don't know. You could speak to it. No, I think that the administration would be happy we'll be to deliver reports. Right. Yes. Really, because once they have a sense of the kind of information that you know people in the community are curious about, or the five of you are curious about, then it's easy to put that stuff out there. I mean, obviously, there's some information that could not be shared, right? right? But a lot of the information that we have, I mean, you know, we look at the DESI website. It's amazing how much information is there, right? I mean, you can even look at what Hopkinton's AP scores look like yeah. on the DESI website. Everything is there. So it's easy to put that stuff together if people are interested in. 
And many of our reports seem like they've been, it's kind of just how we've done it. Like, every, you know, mm -hmm. this is the report that we do, and so just you, and so some, with some of our fresh perspectives, and maybe a lack of that institutional knowledge, mm -hmm. the way we did it doesn't necessarily make sense. Like, it doesn't come in my brain with the way maybe it was intended. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it might be more the fresh look. I totally second that idea of looking at defining our reporting a little bit better. I love your idea too of when we know we've got a report coming in two months on whatever it is of being able to put it out there so the work's not having to be replicated and we're not uh, frustrating whoever's giving the report on whatever it is by our kind of not focusing on what it is that they've brought forward and kind of focusing on what's been up here yes. when we didn't give them the heads up on this is actually what we're looking for. Yeah, right. And we do have that you know, sort of running log of what do we typically cover at a meeting. Mm -hmm. So if we get to you know November 1st, and that's typically when we might look at MCAS scores, for example, right. um, if there are aspects of MCAS that people would like to drill down right. on, then you know a month in advance, if you're using that calendar, it would be great to get those questions so that when Jen Parson puts that report together, she can address yes. those so that you know, she's sort of not caught off guard while she's in mid-presentation, right? So if we could maybe look at that running list yes. ahead of a month or two ahead of time to see that it's coming and then kind of, you know, I don't know what the... On our agenda. Uh, on our agenda kind of just as a way of looking ahead so yes. that that's, we're able to... I think that would make it feel so much smoother and Again, like three years ahead of now, if we did this, I think the community would begin to anticipate as well. What, when, you know, I have all these questions about, you know, student services. When is the briefing? You know, and right. I think if, we, if we've defined it and we have that rhythm and people can anticipate, it would, I think it would be great for everybody. Mm -hmm. right. It would be great to have biannual reports from yeah. student services, reports yeah. about the state of social emotional learning in the district and mm -hmm. what kinds of programs are being used because you know part of our role is to communicate to the community what's happening in the schools mm -hmm. on this level. I think it would be great to learn more about the programs that are actually being implemented. That's informational. So you're quiet, Jim. Does this mean you have a <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I shouldn't have said that. I should have filtered better earlier, obviously. Um, no, I do. I think I, I like the idea to be from several different standpoints. I think if we can not force folks who have other jobs to do to recreate something that they've already mm -hmm. created, I think that's a huge time saving piece mm -hmm. and just respect for the fact that, you know, yes. there, there's a lot going on. And so to recreate a report, if we could figure out what we'd like to see specifically, and if it's not already on that report, it would be great to get it done ahead of time. Um, and, it, and like you said, I think if one of the things uh, you know on the calendar that you showed earlier, Mina, um, and we've talked about it before, is you know at what point do we do our first budget? You know, at what point do we do our, our you know all those different things that come out on a fairly cyclical basis, whether they're once a month or once a year, just to kind of know ballpark when that's going to show up is helpful to the community because I think then, like you said, you know, if there is a concern about student services or transportation or whatever the topic is, they'll know it's going to be, here. you're going to get a ton of information about it on, you know, June 28th, right? so it'll be helpful um, to have that in advance, I think. So I'm not quiet because I'm filtering this time. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do want to reiterate how gracious Dr. Kavanaugh has been with our onslaught of questions and our emails to her throughout the course of the year. She has never been anything but so kind and polite and responsive when I'm sure the tendency or, or the impulse to do otherwise might have been there somewhere <laughs> latent in you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably time consuming with the five of us just, it's got to be time consuming just managing the so much easier if information. <laughs> like it. You know, if there were a way to just get around the open meeting. Do you see the exhaustion on her it face? So yes. We've been eight, I, I got a compliment from Dr. Kevin on that I've gotten better with my questions. <laughs> 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 in my second year. And now uh, you're in your third, so think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, the second year does get a lot better. You do sort of really almost 
feel you don't feel like you know what you're doing, but you have a little bit better sense that you know what you're doing. In the third year, even better. All right, it's good to know. So, I, can I bring up another process, a different process besides yes. that, um, that that I think we all generally universally agreed was not the best process, and that was our approach to the new calendar. And I think this, and I don't know, we we had such good intentions that it sort mm -hmm. of got bungled in how we went about it, and. I think for me the takeaway from that was um, just I think haste. I think we were a little bit hasty, and I think we we all wanted to to make positive change and in, in, increase inclusivity. Mm -hmm. And somehow by deciding and then undeciding, and, um, it didn't work so well for us, for the community. For the, you know, I think that was, and I, I guess I learned. But well, maybe I didn't learn. I took away, hopefully I learned. I took away from that um, to sort of stop for a minute and try to think about what, a little bit more about the ripple on effect of what mm -hmm. we're doing and is it, are we prepared to make this, to, have we given it enough thought to your point about deliberation? I think mm -hmm. yeah, that was one particular area where I felt like, whoops, we really didn't do mm -hmm. so great on that one. And it, you know, was in, it, it led to, you know, a complete misunderstanding of intent, and it was it just was the negative impacts were di were difficult, and I think we we started from such a positive place, so clearly our process was not good. So I don't know. That was just one big learning for me. In that I don't know. I'm sharing that, but I thought that was just a learning opportunity for us. So. Uh, I appreciate you bringing that up, um, Amanda. I think it was a great learning opportunity for me too. Uh, I was surprised with how I reacted to it and, and how it all went about. But I am also very grateful that we as a team were strong, are strong, um, that we were able to look at the growth opportunity there and move forward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now we have a calendar subcommittee and, uh, you know, we both have a fabulous calendar out. And so just looking forward to it. And I, I think that's part of the job is those challenges and that we go through those motions. And I think um, checkpoints on lessons learned are important. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, the other part that I also want to throw out there is... Um, some preparation on process going into executive sessions. I think it's another area that I would want help on because, you know, sometimes an issue comes up that cannot be discussed in the open and so we have to enter into executive session and we don't know what that topic might be because it's an issue of the moment. Um, and so just knowing the process, process, not the content, just the process ahead of time, I think would help our uh, prepare ourselves, especially with the newness of the committee, right? If we don't know how the process is going to fun go, uh, consuming that data becomes, and, and responding um, and acting on it, much like the calendar that happened, uh, you know, uh, just taking that time and being deliberate about it would help. Yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Because in some ways we model thinking for our one observer. <laughs> there are people who watch from home, I would just okay. say. Okay, we have five people. <laughs> and so I, I would think if we're modeling the kind of thinking we would like other people to do and to take our time over important issues and try to clarify and explain as best we can what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I found as an educator that it's teaching, I've, you know, I'm not saying I've been a great success as a teacher, but I've learned the importance of slowing down mm -hmm. and repeating important things and being as clear as possible and to keep saying things in different ways until I'm <laughs> certain that it's understood. Um, and doesn't put people to sleep at the same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, I mean, think of how many, to go back to the budget, how many times did you deliver the budget presentation? I mean, it was a lot. I think you probably did that. <laughs> I could do it in my sleep. But yeah, through it. But every time, as, as someone who's in the community who just can check in here and there in the middle of your busy life, 
the repetition is invaluable because yes. each time you hear it, you take on a little bit more information and mm -hmm. you actually own that. Like, mm -hmm. and, and so while it's, I'm sure, hugely tedious for you, I think that right, you're right about that, that repetition is key, yeah. especially on important things. That's why. Um, I also want to say this, that um, I think as we get into the new year and plan for the year ahead, you know, we, I think we're walking in with, uh, you know, looking to strengthen the good work that we did in the past year, um, looking to find some of these process improvement areas identifying and walking into that. I think we need to also be prepared for failures. We will have challenges. We will fail. Learning opportunities. I, I, I think just being prepared for that is important. And respecting the democratic process, I think, is important too. Because I totally agree that we need to hear each other out and think mm -hmm. and and have time to reflect it and decide where we stand. But I think we're not all going to agree all the time. Right. And I think, especially you, Mina, as chair, you need to make the call. We've been deliberating on this for two days or three days or however many days. And we're not going to convince each other to have a complete consensus. So we have to respect the democratic process. And some of us are going to be unhappy and some of us are going to be happy, but we need to, to respect that. And I think, um, you know, that's another thing I think that we've figured out over the last year as a new committee. And I think going into next year, I'm optimistic that, you know, with ample time to reflect and think, yeah. we need to also know that we're not always going to agree, which is part of the point of having five people. And if we had two more, yeah. there's going to be, you know, <laughs> it's really I think more, right? It's, it's, it's appreciated. Yeah. I think. I, I, I think we're even can't you know. to see that. Right. You right. guys yeah. working it out differently right. even amongst yourselves. Right. You're bringing different perspectives. Exactly. I just forgot the word in a full time. No, I think it's such an important good. point because we're all thinking, and mm -hmm. that's good. We're not just rubber stamping and moving along. We're thinking, we're disagreeing. Right, right. That's right. normal. We're modeling a way to do it civilly with each other. Right. So, Jen, are you leaving? I do need to. Okay. okay. Does she look like she's leaving? You look a little what? like you're leaving. Did you notice that? Um, <laughs> we're, we're really done anyway, but I just wanted to. Um, Call your attention to that. We are going to um, check in on a potential template for a mid-year review. Okay, um, great. That Mina has uh, unearthed. It's like a slide ahead. Here, um, or maybe two slides ahead. Uh, the next slide is really about uh, uh, do we have adequate resources at our disposal? Do you know how to get access to policies and procedures and, and um, tech resources and NISC resources? And how about our norms? Are they working for us or not or whatever? Um, we talked about some of the open meeting law stuff already, but the next slide, if you could, sorry. Um, oops, we can't get there. That's weird. No. Um, is that the end? Well, no, it's the, I'm here, but not there. But did, did you share this with us? I will share okay. it, yeah. Oh, that would be great. Um, so th Mina had unearthed a, a more detailed document for us to look at our own work in December. I think she was ear Oh, mm -hmm. well, if you could just click on the form. And I'll share this and you can look at it. We're not loading anything now, but it's just a heads up. Would this kind of thing work for you or not? Um, and that's sort of what you're going to miss when you... Did we do this last year with... Um, we did something very similar last year with, with, with um, Dorothy. Dorothy, Dorothy, Dorothy yes. 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 Yeah. We started. Mm -hmm. So finding some kind of a, a tool that we can just kind of quickly see, is our work effective or not in December, and okay. what do we need to do to tweak? That's yeah. a good idea. Mm -hmm. Have a little checkpoint. Maybe All right, right. good. Thank you. All right. Bye, Jen. Thank you so much, Jen. We'll see you. I hope, uh, how's the, uh, yeah, we'll check in later about the dance competition. <laughs> <laughs> what is your dance competition? The dance competition, we'll check in later. Oh, boy. Is yeah, that really over for uh, a little while? Oh, January. Now that's consuming. I can verify. Yeah, you want to talk about time? <laughs> exactly. A lot of costume purchases I've heard. A lot. We have Outfit. six. Um, but that's that's a. Some folks had seventeen, and I was like. Seventeen. Yeah, seventeen. All right. Good luck, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. Right. See you soon. Okay. So sorry. Can we go back to the slides. For yes. Second. Just. I just wanted to give Jen a heads up about where we're going before we finish, and we'll just wrap up now. Yeah. Yeah, please. Um, so the wrap up. Are you okay with the wrap going to the wrap up, Mina? 
I just have one thing that I want to say. I know I talked a little bit about uh, failures and being prepared for the fact that mm -hmm. we, we will fall. Uh, I guess the important thing is to have a risk mitigation strategy here, right? Knowing that at least learn from um, lessons, lessons of the past. So preparing for that is important, but it's, uh, so we will do our best. Um, at the same time, there are things that might happen. And I think we have done very well as a team. Uh, the calendar is an example. I think there are many other examples uh, that come to mind where we have been able to uh, learn from our lessons and move on. So I am confident we will do the same and uh, perhaps better in this year as we set our goals. So, in that we haven't really done this before, I guess the question is, did this help at all? Did you think this was a positive experience of having time to talk about these things? Um, do you think we were able to be critical at all of what we've done? Um, do you think this is going to help us in the year ahead? I think so, and I, I'm very glad that the focus was constructive. Um, and helped us to move forward instead of looking back with agony and misery and melancholy <laughs> to look forward. And now we have a larger toolkit than we had before and we know each other's rhythms a little bit better. So I, um, I appreciate the chance to make productive comments. I appreciate the intentionality of it, of starting from this point. And I, I think it's the starting of a conversation, and I think as our comfort level grows in, you know, in some of the different areas we've had, I think we'll all, like Meg and everyone has said, we, we will have learned from that. And yeah, it's all a learning process, and I think tumbling and failing is part of it. And, and picking ourselves back up and, and dusting ourselves on. off and moving on. Right. And, and going back to look at some of the difficult things, the, I appreciate you bringing the calendar up as well because I felt like that was a difficult process. I felt like I learned a lot from that process. And, yeah, me too. You know, what we're looking at in the year ahead, the process was the, for me, bigger than the product. But I think the issue. The great about that example uh, is that the, the remedy, the learning and the remedy is that we we escalated and now put in in, in place mm -hmm. a better tool, the committee, to give it the proper attention that something of that magnitude deserves with the right representation. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, I'm not sure if we had if we hadn't gone uh, through our stumbling, I'm not sure if that would have bubbled to the surface as a right. priority for mm -hmm. right now. And I think the fact that we were able to say, whoa, oh, this is not good. We need to fix this and move ahead constructively. Um, I think that speaks to us and the uh, and our ability to work and fix it with something better. Like they are in a better place mm -hmm. with that. So, um, yeah. And, and to be okay to disagree sometimes. I think, like Dawn said, I think that's we do bring different things to the from the community, and that we're not always going to agree. But if we have the right process in place, that can make it not feel hurtful walking away from it. I'm thankful, Mina, that you put this on the agenda because mm -hmm. literally after a whole year, this is the first time that we have set, you know, had as much open discussion. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've done it before but with a moderator, but we haven't actually taken the time where we're so busy and we have so much to do to talk a little bit more loosely about right. something. So I appreciate, you know, just getting to spend this time. I do too. Great. I do too, it, and I know that it's easier to reflect on things when they're further in the distance than things that have happened recently. So I think if we continue to do this every six months, it's a good thing, and we'll probably have more insight about some of the things we did this past year come December. Be ready to talk about them. Maybe. Yeah, and we need time after we fail miserably to <laughs> collect our thinking and figure out how we could have better responded or acted or spoken in that given instance. You know, this is a result, this meeting is really a result of everyone wanting it, right? Um, and I'm, I'm actually very thankful for Dr. Kavanaugh also for her feedback 
um, about this meeting, the structure, uh, participation, um, etc. And I know that as we define some of these goals, we will be working closely. And, you know, we are one team at the end of the day. We mm -hmm. just spoke about how we are in it for the same very, very same reasons. Um, so I am very hopeful for the year ahead and we will put those risk mitigation strategies in place that we don't, um, we reduce the number of falls we have mm -hmm. in the year ahead. Um, and uh, I, I am a very appreciative as well. I think this dialogue was uh, very well put together, Amanda, um, in terms of uh, keeping it constructive, keeping it forward looking. Uh, and I do think our review was critical and it was respectful. Uh, and I don't see any obstacles. I speak for myself as one voice. I think um, this process has been great. I, uh, and I think while respecting OML, while being on camera, we have been able to discuss um, some of the uh, some of our growth opportunities that we will look to resolve in the upcoming year. So I'm very proud of our work today. Thank you. All right. So um, just bringing this part to a close. Watching the time. Sorry. Let's see. Um, this brings us to I think our last agenda item, which is the mid-year self evaluation. Um, Mina, I don't know, since you found the form, I don't know if you wanted to spend any more time that we've already covered on this, but um, did you share the form? Um, so if you click on that link to see the form, it's actually uh, you know, just like MSE, North Dakota has a school board as well. Uh, and, you know, uh, just looking at the research, I thought this was a good template to look at. Mm -hmm. I think we can customize it. Um, as we set our goals, I think our evaluation should be um, in line with our goals. Mm -hmm. So we should we should look to that. Mm -hmm. um, Amanda, there was one other point in the previous wrap up slide was uh, key areas of strength and growth opportunities. Uh, to work on in smart ways in the year ahead. Um, Is there something you think we should look to uh, do as a follow up uh, and you know review this entire session and jot those down and bring it back? Um, we can. I did take notes. I mean, obviously, we have the uh, minutes recording. I did take notes on just some of the strengths and opportunities and mm -hmm. so forth. Uh, do you want to bring it back? Do we want to? Uh, well, uh, you know, it's one twelve. Maybe we take five minutes to talk about some highlights. I have some too that I have been taking notes on. Well, then okay. let's Go hear ahead. your let's highlights. Hear yours. Yours. Okay, so I think one of the first things uh, we talked about is to uh, be deliberate in our process to take the time. Um, to review. Um, I think the other part that we talked about is to relook at our time commitment and um, the subcommittees and the work that we have. Uh, we talked about mapping our strengths to our uh, to the work that we have carved out as a school committee. Um, we talked about uh, an agenda planner for the year ahead. Um, I think we talked about what are some of the key items, key areas. I think there was uh, a note around budget season, etc. that we talked about. Um, we also talked about um, processes, um, especially going into executive sessions. We talked about having more forums of this nature where we are able to express how we are doing. Those are things that stand out for me. I think, um, Amanda, you also talked about um, knowing when to reach out for uh, the tools at our disposal, whether it is legal counsel or MAC. Mm -hmm. We didn't actually um, I didn't pause very long on that bullet, but we did have a question about um, do we feel that we all know how to, where, the, where our resources lie, how do we access them, um, 
etc. There, I mean, there is way more out there than I could possibly ever yeah. digest or even find. I feel like I need a personal librarian half the time, but um, I guess, you know, for me, the only one thing that I will say is that I think that we work well when we adhere to the norms that we agree to. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a couple of places this year where we have stumbled is when we have veered from the norms, mm -hmm. um, intentionally or unintentionally. I think there have just been times when we've stepped away from those. So um, if we feel like they don't work for us anymore, I'd like us to revisit, re revisit them. Um, but whatever we commit to, I think when we all commit to what we've agreed to, we move a little more smoothly. Mm -hmm. So that was one tool in the tool list, in, in addition to all the other resources, that um, I think is really important and hopefully we all feel the same way and if it needs review we should bring it back. So and actually to that point we actually do revisit the norms every year and okay. I think what's great is we spent a lot of time on the norms last year. It's a great opportunity that because it's still the same five people that we own what we did last year and to be able to review those and know what right. we feel like was important from last year's norms to carry forward and maybe there were places that we wished we had a different norm in place or something else, I don't know. So would that be on like sure. July? So that's typically, I think August. we do it the first summer session. I mean, this session is obviously different than our typical summer session, but in July, and I think last year, we carried it over into at least August. Yeah. Yeah. As well. yeah. not, if not September, <laughs> we had a long discussion. Yeah, we did. Oh my goodness, but it's, right. it's um, good to be intentional. Uh, 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 sorry, let's go. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, I, I think, um, you know, as part of our evaluation, I think we should also use the norms mm -hmm. as to if we ever um, didn't follow the norms, why did that happen? Yeah. Right. So I think we should evaluate that. Um, I think another aspect that we talked about was to define the reports and the kinds of reports that we want to see. Uh, that's another uh, Item that we talked about. And to follow up on um, how we can legally and effectively share information. Yes. Learning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. I, I, I think there are some other takeaways too, which uh, I didn't necessarily feel are more around the goals, going into the goals. One of which was, you know, um, with the growth that we have, and we're close to the 4,000 number, what's the implication? How can we make sure? Uh, that we have a more representative school committee. So I, I think there are some other smaller tasks that have emerged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we can look to that. I, I think this sounds great. Uh, uh, Amanda, you did such a fabulous job and all this work and, you know, I know uh, you just, you're in the midst of this huge work around the website launch. And I know you have a lot of other personal uh, things that you've been attending to, and I'm so, so thankful for you for having taken this on and led this session. That's Thank right, you. and I agree. You've proven yourself a promising future chair. Oh, dear, no. Okay. Let's go ahead and do it like that. Our dad. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. Actually, um, I wrote it in ink. No, uh, just to go back to the agenda, I just want to make <laughs> yeah. sure we've covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're. I have to go slower. Um, and I just want to say, Mina, while being not physically here, has been working like crazy. Yes. Over, mm -hmm. I don't know how you're even attending to your family matters. And it's um, like a weird hour. Right it is now like for a you, crazy right? hour, and we were on the phone uh, yesterday going through details of this, and I think it was like 1:30 in the morning for her, and it's. Um, it's a thank you for your commitment. I know that some people uh, may have been concerned that you weren't going to be here, but oh my goodness, you're working so hard. Mm -hmm. You're not here, but you're really here. You know, I think I've talked to you here. more now that you're there than when you were like right in town. I so appreciate thank you. you saying that. So here we are. Uh, I think we have actually covered all of our agenda items. Um, our next meeting is going to be July. Oh, sorry, I'm not the presiding officer. That's okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go right ahead. You're on a roll. I was so nervous about being presiding officer. You're doing a great job. The ball. So our next meeting is July 18th. Um, it's a special meeting at 10 o'clock at the central office. Mm -hmm. And then we have one on August 15th at 10 o'clock, and we do not have a location yet for that. It's so. And then I guess we just need a motion to adjourn to make that official. I think we need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> a move to adjourn. I will second that. Okay. Uh, do we need a roll, roll call favor, vote? All in favor, yes, it needs to be a roll, a roll call, call vote to adjourn. How would you like to vote, Nina? Oh, let me think. <laughs> <laughs>
yes, absolutely, yes. I'm a yes. I. I'm a yes, so we are You're adjourned, adjourned and great. we will re-adjourn on July 18th. Thank you very much. Thanks so Thank much, you. Mina. Thank Thanks, you. Mina. Bye. Have a good night.